What is poppy lopping, y'all? Damn, my mic just shocked me. What is going on? <laughs> hey, y'all, we're trying another live. Um, working out some logistics here. You know your girl's got her notes and all that good stuff. And let me mute my mic real fast because I want to put some notes in the thingy here. All right, my bad, y'all. Uh, I wasn't messing with y'all. Um, all right, so I'm trying to get some logistical stuff down here. Happy Father's Day. If there's any fathers in the chat, happy Father's Day, guys. We're talking about reinvention, high mortgage rates, lowering credit credit scores, lowering credit limits, all kind of crap's going on this week. But you know what? I still feel like you can win. I know you can. So we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about some reinvention. So share this. Um, and anybody that's still here, can you let me know if you can hear me? Um, can you put a one in the chat? Because I need to test out my equipment and make sure that I am being heard. So if you can hear me, I need a one in the chat, okay? Just give me a one. Somebody give me a one. Because I hate to keep talking and then like nobody can actually hear me. And I don't find out till later. So anyway. I know y'all ain't going to participate, so let me just start talking, you know what I'm saying? Let's talk reinvention today, y'all. Mortgage rates are at an all-time high. We know this, right? Gas prices, crazy. Automation is taking jobs. I don't know if y'all have seen Taco Bell, but Taco Bell out in Minneapolis, um, yeah, Minneapolis, Minnesota, has literally stations set up where you are not going to deal with a person. It's going to be like Back to the Future. You're going to place your order at a kiosk. Or you're going to use a QR code to, you know, order your food. And then you're going to drive up to this station and a tube is going to bring down your food. This is Taco Bell, you guys. This is like the old school. Like, remember when we were kids, <laughs> Taco Bell was like a place that was turquoise and pink and purple. and had these really like weird beige chairs that would hardly turn when you tried to move them. Uh, from that to not talking to anybody at the drive through This is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Look it up. Automation is going to take your job. I implore all of you this week, go to your job and look at every single thing that you do. Write it down. Do what you do. I want you to imagine whether or not a robot can do your job. It's going down. Okay. So look it up. Minneapolis, Minnesota, they ain't playing with y'all. Okay. Taco Bell, you're about to not be talking to anybody. <laughs> and I know people thought or never thought flipping burgers or stuffing tacos was ever going to be something that a, a robot could do, but they totally can. All right. Anyway, we're still here, even though they're taking our jobs, even though we can't get houses right now, we're still here and it's all good. You know why? Because this channel is all about reinvention. So tonight we're going to talk about how I perceive reinvention and how I'm going to help you in the reinvention process. And I also want you to get to the point where you can start to envision the reinvention of you. All right. I don't care what it is. Quarter three is coming up. Do you understand quarter three is so important? Because essentially, if you have been sleeping quarter one and quarter two, quarter three is all you have left. That's all I have left. If I haven't met my sales goals for PX Credit Solutions, y'all, I got to hit the ground running, sprinting right? I got to hit that finish line because I have goals for myself this year. If you don't have, thank you, Epstein's ghost. <laughs> One person is participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's what we need because I don't want to be talking and then see the replay and it's all silent and y'all won't tell me. Cause you know, last time I had my live, um, I was playing music or like two lives ago, I was playing music through the whole thing and y'all didn't say nothing. You didn't say, Hey Vic, turn off the music. <laughs> y'all just let me keep talking. So anyway, reinvention. Everybody loves a good comeback story. Let's be real. And let's think about some companies that have some like, you know, some rocky moments. They look like they were going to fail. But at the like last 
like fourth quarter, they literally came in and now they're taking over the world, right? Apple, Apple was going to go to crap. You know, Steve Jobs got fired. All kinds of weird stuff happened. But then the dude came in and literally turned the company and the world on its head. Like the iPhone, the iPod, all that kind of stuff. That was just the beginning, right? I'm kind, I'm an old millennial. <laughs> when I was in school, I literally thought having one of those Macintosh computers was a big thing. I had no idea that I was going to be able to have like my whole music life in my phone, take pictures, video, all kind of stuff. Apple is like the comeback kid. Reinvention. That's what we're talking about, right? You want to talk about celebrities. Okay. The Rock always tells the famous story. He has $7 in his pocket. Okay. Big deal. Now the dude's like, you know, worth $360 million, right? Our girl J-Lo, she used to dance for dollars. She used to wear knee pads, right? You know, she used to dance before the commercial breaks on In Living Color. Now she's worth $400 million. Don't sit here and tell me reinvention is not possible. I will not believe you. We don't believe you, right? Because I know it's possible. Now, everybody loves that story. So because quarter three is coming in about not even two weeks, um, I'm looking at the date here, 619. Uh, yeah, quarter three is actually going to be starting July, September, October. Yeah, y'all, it's about to actually, it's already here. Oh, dude. Yeah, July 1st. Y'all better get your, get your goals in check, man. Um, so what do you want to do? You want to lose weight, you want to make more money, you want to get married, you want to get a, a sugar baby, <laughs> you know, what, what do you want to do with your life? Whatever it is, make a plan and figure it out, right? Like sit here, even if you're ghost watching me right now, that's okay. I want you to sit there and really think about, okay, what is it that I want in my life right now? Like, what is it? What is it, right? I'm not going to preach to you on this stream. I'm just going to tell you maybe some things that I want to do. And then hopefully it can kind of, you know, spur some creativity in you. All right. So, yeah, your girl wants to get married. I'm not going to front. I'm not going to say a whole lot about that. But the thing is, if I want to get married, I got to start changing how I live. Right. I want to get married, but I also like living alone. Y'all, I'm going to have to reinvent myself. It's not, I can't have my same like <laughs> way of thinking and get the thing that I want. You want to make money, but you don't like living or you don't like waking up early. Okay, well, you're not going to make more money because you don't like to wake up early. You got to reinvent yourself, right? Like if you want certain things in your life, you got to change your life. You have to change your schedule. You got to change the people you hang out with, everything. Anyway, we're not going to get preachy. You may have noticed that you're living the exact same life over and over and over. 2020 is no longer an excuse. 2021 is no longer an excuse because see, 2021 was your year to catch up. If you haven't caught up yet, you're behind, right? You're behind on everything. If you haven't filed your taxes, you're behind, right? You just are. The IRS is coming, okay? Um, so the first thing I want you to understand when it comes to um, your reinvention plan. You got to be clear on your goals. The reason you're living the same life over and over every single year, I don't care if it's finances or relationship wise. Hey, Club Fortune. I love it. I'm going to put that on the screen in just a second. Um, you may notice again, you're living the same life over and over. I can tell you exactly why. Now, I'm going to try not to be so fidgety because the last time I heard like a lot of banging on the mic. So I'm going to try to like keep my hands to myself. Now, the reason you're living the same life over and over um, is because you're not clear on your goals, right? When I say you're not clear on your goals, I am not saying whether or not that's a good or a bad thing. I am just literally telling you, hey, the reason your life is going in a circle and you're right back at the place that you started and it's Groundhog's Day is because you're not clear. Remember, no matter where you stand on a spiritual standpoint, whether you believe in God, the universe, karma, I don't care what it is, it's not going to change because those entities deal in absolutes. What does that mean, credit solutionist? Now you're talking crazy. I'm not. <laughs> I want you to rock with me on this. Okay, rock with me on this. If you're not clear on your goals and the universe and whatever you believe in spiritually works in absolutes, if you're not clear on your goal, it means you don't know what you want. It means you're not even asking for the right thing because you don't know what you're asking for, right? You cannot just tell the universe like, okay, I want to make more money. Okay, what does that even mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> and you want to make more money. Why? Why, bro? You already done showed the universe the money that is giving you, the little bit that it gives you, you can't even do anything with it, right? Like you over here buying cheeseburgers and tequila every Friday, <laughs> right? And I'm guilty. So I'm not trying to act like, oh, I'm better than you. Hell nah. This is stuff that I've come to the conclusion of. That's why I'm able to regurgitate it and tell you. So if you ask the universe, I want more, I want more money. It doesn't really know what to provide you because you're like, okay, I want more money, but it's not just going to provide you more money so it could sit stagnant, so it could sit dormant. If you know anything about like, you know, um, the universe, God, all that kind of stuff. When I pray to God, I understand when I ask for something, I got to actually have a plan. I got to have a plan to put it in motion. I can't be like, hey, I want to lose some weight, but, 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 but I'm not going to get up and walk every day. I want, I want to live the same life and be lazy, but I want to lose 50 pounds. No, that's not how it works. So my goal is not clear. So therefore it's going to remain dormant because I'm not giving it that sauce that it needs to, to get going. Right. Everything recently that I've been like asking for, and I talk to God, I don't talk to the universe. I believe in God. So if you click off the video, it's cool. I don't, it, it, whatever, <laughs> you know, but when I talk to God, I'm like, Hey God, I want this. And then I look at my life circumstances and I say to myself, is my life looking like it's going to fit the thing that I'm asking for? And if it doesn't fit the thing I'm asking for, I stop asking for it because now I'm insulting God by asking him for something that I don't have conditions to, to take care of. I don't have conditions to even accept it into my life, right? So y'all be like, okay, you don't understand how closely this relates to your money. There's something something off in our way of thinking. If we don't have the money that we want, we don't have the partner we want. Um, hell, you don't even have a credit card that you want, right? And see, I lost somebody because I was talking about God. You see that, y'all? But that's how you find your tribe. It's like, if I talk this way and it speaks to you, you stick around. If I talk this way and you just want some quick, quick, quick get to it, Victoria, this ain't the channel for you. It's not the channel for you. You're not even going to make a good client because I'll be having my clients on the phone shouting hallelujah. Right? <laughs> because I know how this works. It's not just surface stuff. It ain't. Sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. This is why stuff's not working out for y'all. <laughs> it's literally because you're not making the connections. <laughs> Credit is more than just logging on to YouTube and looking at some random person's video. It's more than that. So let me give you an example. Now, I took psychology back when I was attempting to be a college student. I was, I was fronting y'all. I was pretending. Okay. <laughs> I made the worst college student because the only reason I went to college was to socialize. Whole nother story. Okay. I didn't go for the grades. I went for, Hey girl, how you doing? Like, that's why I went to college. So anyway, but I picked up on this in college. It was in a psychology class and, um, it was really a class about finding out what is your why. And there's a really simple exercise that you can do to get to your why. And don't worry, we're going to talk about credit further on into the video. But when you talk about what's your why, if I'm talking to you and you're a client and I say, and you say, you know, hey, Vic, you know, we're on our free consultation because I'm doing free consults right now if you go to the website. Um, and also, guys, that's my cash app right there. I learned now that I'm monetized, I'm supposed to ask y'all to super chat and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get to that. I'm, I'm going to get more comfortable with that. Uh, but what's your why? OK, so you're supposed to ask yourself a question and then you're supposed to continue to ask why until you get to the, the point that you're at the bottom and you can't answer any further. I'll give you an example. A client calls me and they say, I want to fix my credit because I want to have a home. No, nay, let's start a little even we'll start higher than that. You call me because you want to fix your credit. What do you want to do with your credit, customer? Okay, Victoria, I want to have a higher credit score. All right, I'm going to ask you why. So now we're going down a level. And then you say, well, I want to have a higher credit score so I can qualify for credit. Okay, why do you want to qualify for credit? We're going down another level. I'm asking you so I can get to the root of why you're on the phone with me. Why do you want to have credit? Oh, because I want to get a house. Cool. You want to get a house. But why is it that you want that house? You could get a house and then not afford the mortgage. Why do you want a house? That's not a strong enough reason to want to fix your credit. Why do you want a house? We're going deeper. You say you want to get a house because you want to house 
your family. You want to get a house because you don't want to be paying rent and paying somebody else's mortgage. Okay, now we're starting to cook. Let's go deeper. I don't want to pay somebody else's mortgage because now I know I'm wasting money. Now I know I'm giving money that could be building my legacy. I'm giving that to somebody else to help them build their legacy. That's why I don't want to want to rent anymore. That's why I want to have a home. Right? Okay. Why? Because I want to provide something for my family. Now I really truly want a legacy. When I'm gone, I want to know that I was the person that was able to create the house that everybody can go to if they have nowhere else to go in my family. That is a root answer for why you want to fix your credit. I hope that that made sense to you, <laughs> okay? But you have to keep asking yourself why, why, why until you get to the bottom of the questions and then there's nothing else you can ask yourself. So you really want to fix your credit because of legacy, it's not just to have a good credit score. Now we're cooking with gas because I know where your mind is and I know how I can work with you. All right. So, um, you know, people have a lot of different ways to try to go about getting the things that they want. Some people pray, some people do dream boards and all this other kind of stuff. My take on dream boards is that they may work for some people, but they don't work for me because Dream boards have way too many goals on them all together. And like I said, I just, you know, I, I go through this process with some clients where I have to ask them a million questions because those are the kind of people sometimes they have a dream board and the dream board. I, I'm sorry, I can't look at a boat, a mansion, a credit card, a stack of money, a skinny body, a bikini, an island. I can't look at all of that on a board and then understand where I'm supposed to start. It's too much information. That's why I say your reinvention. Yes, you can have a lot of goals listed. Yes, but you only get to pick one to focus on because if you pick the right one, everything else is going to come after anyway. So no, you don't need to have a yacht on your dream boat right now or on your dream board. <laughs> so if you have a yacht on your dream board, take it away. Okay, I need you literally all you need to have on that damn dream board right now. If you're trying to fix your credit, 720 and have an American Express on there. That's it. Okay, sorry. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Now, I got that out. All right, the woo woo is done. I am done. <laughs> now, when it comes to reinvention and, and credit repair, there's a lot of similarities there. And this is where I lose a lot of people. Again, I don't care because I understand and I know my craft and I know what I'm talking about. Now, changing course in your life and changing course in finances is okay. Sometimes you're going to need to leave where you are to change. That's okay. That's okay. Right. Um, you can always, you know, kind of pivot. I, that's my favorite word. I like to say pivot. And when you pivot, here's the thing. You need to remember the mistakes that you've made, but don't hold them against yourself. The reason that you have to remember some of the shortcomings is because, um, you know, it, it helps you to not be able to rewind and do the same things over again. Right. So I always say it's OK to remember your past. Like they say, you know, forgive and forget. No, you forgive, but you don't forget because if you forget, you're going to be going back into that same cycle that we talked about before. We're talking about going into quarter three, you guys. You don't have, you can't afford to forgive and forget, right? You can't afford to forget in quarter three. I'm sorry. Because if you forget, you're going to go right back. Hey, extreme. Uh, you're going to go right back and you're going to repeat the same thing over and over. I don't care if it's your life or your credit. You're going to do the same thing over. And remember, every move that you make right now is creating your past. OK, no matter how minuscule and minor the goal or the, the move seems, it, it is actually it's pivoting you in a different direction every single move you make. Like in my um, apartment that I had. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Extreme. Let me put this on the screen real fast. I'm going to get everybody else's comments, too, because um, I'm all about participation. So if you left a comment, it's going to be shown. Um, yeah. See, YouTube didn't notify you. I told you on my last live when I got monetized, YouTube stopped pushing my content, which is totally okay, right? I mean, well, okay, it's okay, but it's also not. 
It's okay, but it's not okay. <laughs> but we want them to push the content. So that's why I figured, okay, I'm going to start going live because I just love talking and I need to get these jitters that I get when I go live. I want to get them out of my system, right? Because it's really not easy. But I'm going to stop saying that because saying that I that it's not easy is going to, it makes it, I'm going to start believing that it's not easy, okay? I'm about to be all fearful for no reason. Now, um, like I said, you have to remember your past because every move that you make is creating your past. Just don't repeat the mistakes. That's it. That's all it is. Now, let's say in the credit world, if we're able to remove your past mistakes, then it would seem kind of like you have a, a clean slate. I could understand how that how somebody could see that. But remember, just because we remove something from Experian, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's removed everywhere. Because remember, there's LexisNexis, there's Innovis, right? There's CoreLogic, there's all these other credit bureaus where your information could still be reporting. So um, yeah, clean slates, eh, I'm not sure if I truly believe in them. So um, <laughs> even down to like, if you got arrested and they tell you that your record got expunged, that's not always true. It depends on your state like law, right? Uh, you could still be in an FBI database right? You're just not in the police database. So if I run your credit for a job, you know, you might not pop up, but if you try to go get a federal job, yeah, that, that crap's going to pop up, <laughs> right? So your slate is not always as clean as you think it is. Um, so we're kind of going off into the next topic here, which is in the reinvention process, you do have to address your past, okay? Um, you know, Think about those dumb criminals that delete text messages. They, you know, killed somebody and they texted somebody about it or a hitman that didn't delete the phone calls or whatever. You've all seen the crime shows. People come back and they remember that stuff. They they pull it up out of the phone records. I used to work for Singular Wireless <laughs> in their tech support department. And that was, God, that was eons ago. Um, but this was when texting wasn't even that big of a thing. It was like the early 2000s. And I remember people used to call in and I had that we had a software. This, like, this is like 2005, y'all. This is a long time ago. But I used to sit there on the phone with people and they would say like, oh, my text didn't go through, my text, this and that. And I could literally like look at the software and be like, oh, oh, that's what you said in that text. Like we could see your text messages. This was 2005. So imagine what we could do now. Your past is not nobody. Ain't nobody going to forget your past. <laughs> you might forget it. The Internet might forget it. But it's a stamp. It's stamped in time somewhere. So it's the same with your credit. OK, so I want you all to remember that it's like, you know, anyway, I could think about so many <laughs> so many places and areas of life that I thought that my past was deleted, but there's always somebody there to remind you. Okay. Um, I was going to sing the song, but I don't want to get a copyright strike. So anyway, your past will catch up with you. And I need you guys to pay attention and take all of this stuff seriously. I have clients that are now receiving notices from the IRS. If you didn't um, file your taxes, and if you didn't request an extension, the IRS is now sending out letter CP14. That's CP14, okay? Because um, Caesar wants what Caesar, what Caesar is due, okay? Now, the CP14, what the IRS does with that, and this is why it's, it's going to tie into credit. Just hear me out. So the CP14 is a form that is basically somebody went into your a tax file, they saw your 1040, your 1099s, uh, your W-2s, they saw, well, they saw all those forms, like they saw all your income forms and they've compiled based on your income, what your debt to the IRS is. So whether or not you filed your tax return with the IRS, they are still going to be able to generate a, a tab, a bill. They know how much you are supposed to owe in taxes based on the income that you made. Now, I encourage you, if this has happened, to get on it right away. Uh, file your extension because right now you can't do the extension online. You're not going to be able to go onto the IRS website and say, hey, I, I just I want to, you know, you can't click a button and say, oh, I want to wait until July or October. You can't do that now. You have to actually mail in a letter. So this is if you got the CP14 and you never did your uh, extension. Now, uh, when you do that, 
I'm going to say do not try to pay that bill right away because the thing is you may have expenses. And if your expenses are over 12,000, I think it's 12,400, something like that. Don't quote me, but it's $12,000 and some change. If your expenses are over that, it is in your best interest to file your taxes on your own or hire a professional and then uh, register. Yes, give unto Caesar what is due Caesar. Let me put that on the screen since we're talking about it right now. So um, and for those of y'all that just joined, thank you. We're talking about the IRS and we're talking about why you need to not be like ignoring what Caesar is telling you is due to Caesar right now. <laughs> So that's CP14, all right? Because somebody, I don't know, somebody put that in the chat. I could type it in myself, but it's CP14, okay? Um, so Cayenne Pepper 14. <laughs> I don't know if that was right, Extreme. I know you're a military guy. <laughs> Cayenne Pepper, is that CP? Oh, but we also know what CP means, colored people. Um, okay, so anyway, CP4, CP14. So if you know that your expenses are over $12,400, give or take, uh, file your taxes yourself because you're going to end up getting more of the deductions. So hopefully the tax bill that the IRS has calculated for you is not the true amount that you're going to owe in taxes. So you owe it to yourself to at least try that, right? And we're going to talk about... Um, we're going to go a little bit deeper into the taxes right now, because I think this is something people need to know now. All right. You get that notice. Go talk to a tax professional. OK, I gave you about as much information on that as I possibly can. Um, yes, I am approved by the IRS to do taxes. Um, however, I am not at liberty to give official tax advice over the Internet. Right. I can't do that. I'm not a tax attorney, uh, but I can do your tax return for you. Um, not an enrolled agent or anything like that, but I am a um, I am an approved tax preparer with the federal or with the government, I guess, federal government, whatever. So I can do that. Um, oh, we got a special one up in here. Is that oh, I should have known by that beard. Is that really you, sir? <laughs> that's a nice that's some nice facial hair you got going on there. Uh, is that notice under Title 26? Um, when you say Title 26, is that, are you doing like the, um, you know, that thing where they do the payment coupons and all that other stuff? Is that what you're talking about? Where like your invoice is already paid and all that? Uh, Nocklin Television Shorts? Talk to me. Talk to me, brother. And are you a Israelite? That's my other question. Not being funny. I just want to know. All right, let's go back here. So, all right, give Caesar unto, give unto Caesar what is due to Caesar. Yes, this is true. Okay. Um, anywho, let's go further into these taxes. And I want to dispel a myth that is happening in the credit repair space as well. <laughs> I see you answered. Okay, I'm becoming. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm going to start doing though on the real? Uh, this is to Nocklin. I am going to start letting people come on. But I don't know that I trust people enough to not come on and not do something crazy. Right. I mean, I guess my channel is not big enough that people will come on and like do stupid stuff on camera. But if anybody's ever willing to cam up and come talk to me about stuff, um, holla, holla at your girl. All right. So let's talk about let's go a little further into the credit game and how it relates to your taxes, too, because I got some stuff for y'all. We're going to be talking about child support tonight, too. Again, because you guys were not here at the beginning, but happy Father's Day to all the men. And I'm going to say this, and I know I'm going to get some flack from the women, but today is a day that is for the men, okay? Happy Father's Day to all of the men. And I mean men born men. I do not mean identifying as a man. I mean an actual natural born man that is there taking care of their children. And if you are not taking care of your children, and it is because baby's mama is keeping you away... I feel for you. Uh, we're going to be talking about child support a little further into this live. So stick around. Uh, my first child support video upset a lot of men because I didn't have remorse. <laughs> um, see, I lost some people. Those were the moms that probably call themselves the dads. Those are the ones that fell off. Now, look, again, I'm giving y'all props today. The men. All right. Women, you're mothers. You are not fathers. All right. Let's just let's just embrace what we are. You know, if you're a single mom, you've done an amazing job. I'm sure you're just a woman that's doing a lot. 
All right. You're not a mom and a dad. You're just a mom. You're a super mom. Just take that title, girlfriend. Take it. Right. We see you. I see your work, girlfriend. Shoot. Now, so I got the dads, though. I got y'all later on in the in the in the live. And I apologize for the mic noise. All right. I apologize in advance. OK, so business credit. A lot of people want to get into business credit right now, which is a thing. Um, yeah, the dad talk is over. So you guys can come back. The ones that dropped off. Uh, now, the. A lot of people don't understand how credit and business credit really works because we're kind of in a society right now where everybody wants to take these bits and pieces of information and apply it to their life. Now, if you listen to a credit guru on YouTube or Reddit or wherever you get your information from, they will tell you that you should be segueing all of your biz, all of your personal debt over to a business credit card. That's not true. Uh, they will tell you that, you know, maybe don't open up a bank account, but conduct business and have all of your business income going to Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, any kind of virtual wallet and any kind of virtual payment system. You do not want to do that. You need to share this with your friends right now. Share this video because I'm about to be kicking some game because I think a lot of tax news came out last year and it went over a lot of people's heads because they were wanting to hear the sensationalism. Now, let's talk about your federal government and your current administration. The Biden administration has made it so if you have put more than $600 into Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, PayPal Business, all these other, you know, all these apps, um, if you've had more than $600 come in and it is business income, um, those apps, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, they have all been mandated to issue a 1099, right? They have all been like, they they literally will issue you tax documents because essentially if the money's coming in, that's income for you because your employer does not pay you through Venmo. Your employer doesn't pay you through PayPal or Cash App. So it can be, it can be assumed that any money you have coming in is payment for services rendered. Okay. So let's, let's start to really dig into this a little bit. So when a person on YouTube, even your homie, it could be a homie on the block. I don't know who'd be telling y'all this stuff, but <laughs> let's just say somebody told you to conduct business through any one of those, you know, platforms. Again, if you have made more than $600, it has been reported to the IRS. It does not matter if you did not receive the documentation in the mail. It's already been reported, okay? You can't control whether or not Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal reports it. So back to that IRS CP14, they're gonna include that on that CP14. So kind of like on one of my old videos that I talked to y'all about, go to the IRS website, look up your tax transcripts. So you gotta go create an, create an account on the IRS website, and then it will literally pop, pull up everything as far as like if a if a company has issued funds to you or you've housed funds on their platform, um, and they had to do a 1099, it's going to be on that. Um, it's going to be on under your transcript. So if you filed your taxes and you missed something and you see a document there, an income document under your IRS tax profile, there is somebody at the IRS that's auditing your file right now or uh, somebody at your um, at the IRS that is looking at your record and they're comparing it to the transcript. OK, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, OK, I like this right here. Actually, let me go through the comments real fast so we can. Um, so I can get to the the current people. Hey, Epstein. You guys don't know. I talked to Epstein. He's alive, guys. <laughs> I probably won't be monetized now because I said that. But yeah, y'all, that's his ghost. Epstein didn't Epstein himself, just so y'all know. Mm -hmm. So Club, hey, Club Fortune. So you say you went through reinvention yourself in 2017 and barely made 24K and was limited. But last year you made 70K and moved. See, that's what I'm talking about. And the reason you were able to do that is because you already had like you you had the juice. You got the juice. That's what it is. You got the juice. You can see something not your average person can't see. Because, see, I told you all on the last live, life is a game right now. You got to actually play it like a game because don't some of y'all walk around sometimes and feel like we're in a simulation. I've talked to the I've talked to a bunch of friends about this lately and we're not crazy, but life does feel like a simulation right now because it feels like they're playing with us 
And if they playing with us, then cool. I'm going to play the game too. Hey, House of X Entertainment, y'all need to go subscribe to them because they be wilding. <laughs> I would love to meet y'all in person. Oh, man. That would be so dope. I uh, got you. Okay. So you pray to God and you pray to the universe. Got you. Well, in my world, God created the universe. So I feel you. I feel you. Word, word, word. Anybody that's just now jumping in, uh, these comments are from the beginning because I went woo woo and esoteric a little bit, but we good now. We talking about credit and finance and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, we got that one. You got the need. You do well. I suppose not, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, now, Nocklin TV, I don't know if you're still here, but if you said kind of, is that kind of, you are kind of a Hebrew Israelite? <laughs> you know, what's so funny. I used to live in Hollywood, as most people know, and uh, I was a few steps away from Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, yeah, the he Hebrew Israelites were interesting people. They would be out there looking like Ninja Turtles. I mean that in the most loving way possible. <laughs> okay, so I'm not supposed to say cayenne pepper. It's Charlie Pepper. All right, so Charlie Papa. Got you. CP4 notice, okay. They prepare hey, Joan. Hey, girl, hey. Um, I thought I saw an email from you either yesterday or today. So holler at me. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you some code words right now, but... Shoot me an email and let me know yes or no. Are we doing it or are we not? Say yes or no. Um, hit me up. Email me. Uh, da, 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 da. They, oh, that must have been because, you know, I, I complimented his uh, mustache and beard, y'all. Look at that. Look at that guy's face. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, come on. That's awesome. I love seeing salt and pepper on a young looking face. That's amazing. All right. So here, uh, Club Fortune is talking about um, the $600 uh, 1099 thing I was talking about. So he says he remembers eBay warned him about this last year and he had to sell, had to sell of a valued, held, had to sell off a valued item at a loss to avoid that. Got you. So here's how they're going to get a lot of people too with this. These, these apps, these reseller sites, they are going to be reporting you to the IRS because anything you sell is profit. It's profit. It doesn't matter. Like if you sold it for below market value, it's still a profit. So there you go. Mm -hmm. And then also we know, okay, uh, Nocklin, um, I'm not too deep into it, but the United States is a corporation, is it not? Like when Jerome Powell gets on screen, y'all, Jerome Powell is essentially giving you the rundown. He is giving you the income report. Uh, the, uh, what, what will we call it? He's giving you the earnings report of the United States. When you watch these people give you the, this information where they talk about inflation, they talk about interest rates going up. They tell you about the spending, the deficits, all that kind of stuff. Look at it as you are on an earnings call. The United States is a business. Just like on my post today, I told y'all that apartment buildings are a business. You guys aren't listening to me though. Some of y'all are though, not all of y'all. But some of y'all are some of y'all aren't listening. Some of y'all are the United States is a business. So anytime that Jerome Powell gets up there and that uh, that cute little chocolate thing that is now um, she took over Jen Psaki's position. Listen to them when they talk. They are telling you how the business of the United States is running. Am I right or am I right? If somebody in the chat understands what I'm saying, let me know. You get an earnings report. <laughs> That's what you're getting when they get up there. Name and says is a credit card. Yes. Yes. Now. I don't go that deep because if I go that deep, I will not have a business. So I don't go that deep. I leave that to people like you, Nocklin Television, to get out and inform yo people because y'all are the ones that study on this stuff, right? And you can tell us about the birth certificates and all that good stuff. So um, yeah, I feel where you're going. I feel where you're going. Um, I don't have the book with me tonight. Uh, maybe I'll put it on the screen some other night, but uh, I just ordered the Know Your Straw Man. I just ordered that book and I was only 15 pages in and uh, I was flabbergasted. I was flabbergasted. And the crazy thing about that book is it's a very easy read and most people won't ever read it. Uh, Nocklin, do you know that book? I'm pretty sure you've read it just based on what you're saying right now. And what is it, Title 15, that we we basically all need to read? 
All right, all right. Oh, okay, yes, got you. All right, I got you, girlfriend. Massachusetts, hey now. Oh, Lordy. All right, we got everybody up in here, y'all. Oh, Lord. How did I attract all the Hebrew Israelites tonight? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Well, y'all better stick around for the child support part of this talk because then I'm going to piss everybody off. But anyway, um, all right, let's get back to it. <clears throat> I want y'all to stop listening to the hype on the internet. So the business credit hack, which is, like I said, taking some of your personal credit, moving it over to your business credit in order to hide utilization on your personal credit side. Here's the thing. If you have a business, why are you intermingling your personal expenses with your business expenses. You know what I'm saying? If you have a CPA, which you should, if you have a small business um, and a large business, obviously, but if you have a small business, it's in your best interest to just invest in a CPA. They will explain to you a little bit deeper why you should not do that. <clears throat> you never want to intermingle your funds because it, it's very hard um, to justify expenses if these expenses that you're reporting on your tax return were your personal expenses. How how can you justify that? You 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 can't. So when people tell you to move your credit over to the business side, I hear that, but there's other ways to get your personal credit in check, right? Because really you have to go through a whole process to kind of justify the personal going over to the business, um meaning that maybe your business gave the person, you the individual alone maybe. And that's why you moved everything over. I don't know. It's it's really, it's kind of goofy uh, because the thing is your credit score on the personal side has to be, it has to be positive. It has to be good in order to really even get into the business credit side. So I get that people tell you guys to do that. And, and I'm sure there's like loopholes and stuff, but in that respect, I, I like to tell people to be on the up and up. And most of that is because, like I said, with the way that the federal government is looking at where your money goes, um, they're looking at Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. Like if they're looking into that stuff, you could imagine what else they're going to start having access to, right? So playing these little games isn't really wise unless you're paying attention to all sides of this coin and you're you're looking at all aspects of the game, right? Because the point is, like my thumbnail said, these banks ain't loyal, right? They will tell on you. <laughs> That's the thing that you need to understand. The bank will tell on you. Hey, Robbie Ray, uh, the bank will tell on you. Did I not just say these other, these three payment platforms, if they telling on you, you don't think Chase, uh, Bank of America, <laughs> Wells Fargo, you know, you don't think these banks are telling on you? Yes, they are. It's just taking the IRS time to catch up. That's all it is, man. They're just taking time to catch up. So you can run, but you can't hide. You can move your money over here so they don't see it over here, but there's always somebody monitoring on that other side where you hid that money too. All right? It's always somebody. Y'all got to remember the big three, going back to the credit, they, that's not just Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. It's a big 100. There's a gazillion people that are monitoring your finances right now, a million agencies and entities. It's more than check systems, y'all. It's more than check systems. That's another one that keeps a lot of you guys down. Check systems keeps good people down. I ain't, I ain't playing with y'all. It keeps people down. And I don't think it's fair, but I'm here to just tell you the truth and give you the information that you need to know. So it's best to just rectify your situation and get on the up and up. Yeah, it's going to cost you some money. But the solution is you got to make more money, right? Because remember, you got to get definite about what you want to do. Once you know what you want to do, all of these, all of these, I hesitate to use the word issues because they're not issues. All of these, <clears throat> what would you call them? I don't know. All of these happenings they're really just opportunities for you to figure out how to maneuver like a rich person, how to play the game. That's all it is. Nobody's out to get you. 
Okay. Nobody's out to get you. I look at these types of things when they happen as it's like game on for me, right? It's like, how can I figure out a way through this? And then once I figure it out, how can I bring it to the public so they understand how to work it, right? It's kind of like Nocklin, what he's talking about, where he's throwing out these titles in these U.S. sections to y'all, because he is studying how to play the game. So let me put him on the screen, because he's figuring out how to play the game. See, what I do is I'm playing it based on what is written on at, at the surface level, right? So I'm looking at it, okay, you, you owe the IRS, let's figure out how to get it done. He's looking at, okay, you owe the IRS, but does the IRS actually have the right to even charge you in the first place, right? So this is an example of somebody that's looking even deeper because he understands that it's a game and he understands that the United States is a corporation and that we are commodities within that corporation, okay? It's just like McDonald's. It's no different, you guys. It's the same thing. We literally are just business on top of business on top of business. We are a commodity. The reason that you know that, you know, damn, they probably going to take this video down, bro. I'm not going to be able to monetize this. But the reason that we know that we're commodities on some level is because we pay taxes, right? They monitor our income and they're taking a portion of our income from us. The fact that we work for money, because even though I have a business, I work for money. I am your employee. Don't get it twisted. Every business owner is your employee if you do business with them. Okay. Don't get it twisted. Does not mean we are not employees. Okay. Because if you don't give me money, I don't get paid. All right. So everything is a business. Everything is a business. So I'm glad you're here, Nocklin, because you can say what I can't. <laughs> All right. So back to these banks not being loyal. I got to stay on task, y'all. Um, all right. So banks right now, because of inflation, we already know what's going on. You know, um, uh, you know, lower credit lines, credit lines are being cut. You know, they're being cut. So depending on what banks you guys are with, your credit lines are going to start to actually go down. Right. If you have credit cards, you're not using them. You are now underutilizing your credit. The bank will then slash that because they say, okay, you're not using it. And if you're not using your credit line, we are not making a profit from you. So now we have to cut your credit line because we're not getting, profits are low for everybody. Profits are not just low for the American people. Profits have been going down for organizations, for banks, because if people aren't working, the banks are not receiving money. Okay. And the bank can only give loans if they receive money from their customers. Right. Because you guys know um, the way it works is with a bank, you aren't even supposed to have more than uh, what is it? Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I would never put more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in my bank account. <laughs> and I'm saying it like I got it, but <laughs> I wouldn't put more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars into my bank account because your bank account is only insured up until up into two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. FDIC. <laughs> Right. So these are little things you guys want to look into. Uh, so if you do actually, if you're blessed enough to have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, let's say you have five hundred thousand. It's not impressive for you to have a <clears throat> million dollars in one bank account, because if the crap hits the fan, the bank is only insuring you up to two hundred and fifty thousand of that. Right. So for my future millionaires in the group, you need to split spread your money across the banks, two hundred fifty thousand in each bank account. <laughs> OK, so you can actually have all your money. Anyway, I'm going off. I'm going off. I'm going off here and people are seeing it. They're like, wait, <laughs> she's not talking about credit. Let me click off. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're here during the credit talk. It's going to be a little bit of a mixture. It's going to be a little bit of everything. OK, because um, as you guys know, <clears throat> I always have an outline, but I never stick to it. It is what it is. All right. Banks don't lend money. Big TD. Okay. You must have elaborated on that. So I'm gonna let you speak, brother. And happy Father's Day. If you're a father, when you make a deposit to the bank, that actually constitutes loans. You've been loaning the bank's money. Oh my God. Okay. Look, y'all. Hey, the, the, the Israelites are in the house tonight and I am not mad. <laughs> or is there a different name that you guys actually have for yourselves? Because I know everybody that is on this 
uh, wavelength mentally. I understand that you are all not <clears throat> Hebrew Israelites. However, it just so happens that everyone that speaks this way kind of is one. So is there another, is there another name that you all have for yourselves? Because I don't want to be um, disrespectful by saying that you're a Hebrew Israelite if you're not. Uh, but yeah, pay attention to what these what these guys are posting, you guys, and, and look into it. It it would serve you well. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and it's really big. And I mean, of course, in your situation, Extreme, it's a little bit different because of, of your personal um your personal situation, you know what I mean? And you're in a great spot. You know, if you want to come home, um, if you consider the U.S. your home, if you want to come here and purchase a home, get on it. Do it in Virginia. I'll manage it for you for a fee. Okay, get that VA loan, brother. All right, but anyway, back to these banks. That's right, Lee, you a real native, okay? I'm a native by proxy, supposedly. But I haven't, I haven't traced back my family tree like far enough and people get upset with me because I'm like, I, I don't, um, yeah, y'all, I need to create a separate channel because I think <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff that people don't understand about me as far as like my fundamental belief system. And a lot of times that could hurt my business because I am very, um, not your typical person that looks like me. A lot of the way I think is more business oriented and people get upset about that. I have more of a capitalist way of thinking, um, which is what America is founded on. And I don't have any other. I'm just not going to think any other way. I am an American. OK, I that is it is what it is. Uh, but yes, this is great. I love this. Are you with a registered tribe? Are you in a registry? Lee, I'm asking all your business. Anyway, let me get back to my outline. <laughs> Okay. So we know that they're going to be cutting credit lines. Cause like I said, if you're not using the money, then they are not making money from you. So they have every right to cut your credit line. Okay. It does not mean that you suck. It does not mean that your credit is bad. It is not any kind of, um, judgment on you. Okay. It, it doesn't, it's not, that's not what it is. It's just that if you are not in the game and you're not utilizing the credit that the bank gave you right now, they are not in the mood to play. Okay. They are not in the mood for you to have five or six credit cards with $50,000 and above on it. And you are not stimulating their economy. Okay. They're not with it. So they're going to slash it. If it's been inactive for long enough, they're even going to close it. That is going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you in the sense that if you close a credit account, <clears throat> as you all know, oh wait, y'all Google is listening. Hold on. Um, okay, so you guys know if you don't use your credit and then you they close the account, that is going to hit so many different areas of your credit report. It's going to be it's going to make your head spin. So it's going to affect your credit age because now you're missing an account, and then also it's going to affect the amount of credit that you have. So your credit mix is going to be affected, and then it's also it's going to affect your utilization because now this $50,000 credit card that you had that was balancing out all the other debt that you had and making your debt to income or your uh, utilization percentage lower, now your utilization percentage is going to be higher because your available credit has been shrunk because that account closed, right? So these are little things in the credit world that you have to remember and you have to think of and you have to consider. Like when people tell you, oh, if you have a really sucky credit card, close it. Don't close it. Just don't use it as often, but use it and then pay it off before that interest kicks in. Because the more available credit that you have, the lower your utilization is and the higher your credit score is. Because you guys know the biggest parts of your credit report are your utilization and your payment history. <laughs> OK, so these are the things they're not telling you. They're like, these are things that are so obvious, but people aren't paying attention. This stuff's right in your face. That's why I exist. So I can tell you the things that are right in your face. Right. Um, and I know some this this actually trips me out, too, because even, you know, people get online and um, floss about being able to get a home loan. 
that's all good. But the part that people aren't telling you, you know, sometimes when you go on to uh, Redfin or Zillow and you see you're searching for homes in the area because you want to stay up to date about pricing and all that. And I know you guys watching this video, y'all do that because y'all are smart, uh, but you always want to be educated about the housing market, right? And whatever area you're thinking of purchasing in. You know how you see these homes that are under contract or they're contingent and things like that. What happens a lot of the time is that your credit, the person's credit may have been like uh, super great, right? Super, super great. Their credit may have just been stellar when they got approved for that home loan. But did you guys know that you could actually be denied? The underwriter can deny your loan application after closing. <laughs> like I said, we are in the matrix, y'all. Because you literally be sitting there thinking that you got this house. But in the meantime, after your loan got approved, if you were out there balling, being crazy, making mistakes on your credit report, the underwriter can totally run your credit again. And because it's current circumstances, they will deny your application. So that's why when you go to Redfin and Zillow and stuff, you may see a house and it says that it's contingent. Well, it's contingent upon whether or not, you know, the, the, um, the inspection goes through. It's contingent upon a lot of things, but it's also contingent upon whether or not that person still has bomb credit. Because if they don't, they're going to get denied. And you're going to have to go back to the drawing board. You're going to have to go to back to the drawing board because that house is not yours yet. All right. Does anybody know anybody that that's happened to? That's why I say don't floss about something until you are there. Okay, do not, don't, just le keep it to yourself. Don't say nothing. Because I've gone on to Zillow and um, actually my favorite one now is Realtor.com. So I go to Realtor.com and I see homes that, you know, they say they're under contract, yada, yada, yada. And then I come back the next week and it's back on the market. They don't tell you why that is though. They don't tell you why that is, Right. But that's why, y'all, so that's why you're here at this channel, because I tell you little tidbits like this. So, yes, your underwriter can pull your credit again. These banks ain't loyal. These banks ain't loyal. And right now, because everything's tight, they are trying to only work with people that are economically viable. Y'all remember that movie um, Falling Down with uh, Michael Douglas? And uh, that guy, Vondi Curtis Hall, was standing outside the bank. And he said that the bank won't give him a loan because he's not economically viable. That's what the bank will do to you. They'll take away your home loan. You're already packing your boxes and everything. You done told your mom. You done set up the whole housewarming party. You know what I'm saying? Like, you done already planned a pool party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, bruh. And they literally told you. Now nah, we ran your credit again, blood. I said blood. Y'all know I'm from the hood. Yeah, we ran your credit, blood. It ain't happening. You're not economically viable. So I'm telling you about stuff that could happen. So I just want you guys to pay attention. All right. Just be be vigilant. And that's why you're here. Because you're smart. All right. I've been using my credit cards a lot and paying them down by the closing date. Exactly. See, can we talk about it? Let's just create a new theme on this channel. All of y'all that are here right now, you know you're in the matrix. Can we just be real about it? We know we're in the matrix. We just got to play the game. We know we're in the matrix. There is nothing wrong with admitting that you're in the matrix. You are not crazy. You are not crazy. Look at what Joan K just said that she's doing. Joan K knows that she's in the matrix. And I'm not going to tell all of Joan K's info, but Joan K has already been in the game, right? She's gotten some of the things that people want. She has gotten the American dream, right? Joan K, I will let you say what you want to say about your life. However, I will tell you, this is somebody that has already achieved much of the American dream, which is why people look at my channel. She's probably getting all nervous now. <laughs> But she understands. And that's what I'm telling you guys. When you get clear about your goals and then you start to get those goals, life looks a little bit different. And when you play a game like this where she says, 
I've been using my credit cards a lot, but I've been paying them down before the statement close date. So my credit, so my credit report shows 1% utilization. She understands how the matrix works. She gets it. She gets it. See, she's using her credit in the way that credit is supposed to be utilized. She's manipulating her credit score. She knows how, because she understands credit utilization is high. She understands that. Payment history is 35. Utilization, I believe, is a 30%. So Joan has now manipulated 30% of her credit score by paying it before the statement close date. So when it hits her credit report, it shows she's paid most of her balance off. Once it reports, you can go run your credit up like, like it could be whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. It's your world after that statement close date. Right. But what happens is a lot of people ball out of control. And the only thing they keep in mind is, oh, my minimum payment is going to be low. So I'm just going to run this thing down. I'm going to run this card into the ground because all I'm going to owe is thirty five dollars at the end of the month. Cool. But your utilization is going to be sky high. Do what Joan K is doing. Run it up, but pay it off before the statement close date. If you need to know where the statement close date is, it's right in the upper right hand corner of your credit card bill. Don't pay attention to the credit, to the bill, the, the due date. Let's just talk about it real quick. The statement close date, if you didn't know, which most of y'all probably knew because you're smart and that's why you're here, but the statement close date is the date that the creditor takes a snapshot of your account. So whatever your interest is, whatever your balance is that's owed, whatever your last payment was that was owed, they take a snapshot and they shoot it out to all of the reporting agencies that are paying them. So if Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion are, um, if they're paying, if the creditor's paying Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion um, to report your data, the creditor takes a snapshot and they send it off. So whatever is going on at that statement close date on your account, that's what gets reported on your credit report. So sometimes if you've run up your bill and then your credit report sucks the next month, that's why. It's because you had a high balance when your statement close date came about. You had a high balance when the snapshot was taken. But if you manipulate it, much like people do on social media, you know how girls will take a picture and then they'll Photoshop their rolls and their bumps and their lumps out of the picture. Or you know how a guy will take a picture with a girl and he'll he'll crop her out of the picture and then he'll post it like he was there by himself. You know how social media does? That's what you got to do with your credit report. You got to manipulate your pictures. You got to manipulate the picture that the credit reporting agency is going to see. We're in the matrix. Need I say more? Need I say more? Joan K gets it. All right. I love this. Jewels, jewels, jewels. Yes. If you feel like I'm dropping jewels, give me some diamonds in the comments, y'all. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll talk about the matrix and drop me some diamonds. You know what I'm saying? If you hear a jewel, drop a diamond. Living the dream. Hey, I even have a buddy. He's probably watching right now, but his name is Matt Living the Dream. He's living the dream. It's, it's right there in front of us, y'all. It's right there in front of us. And the thing is, too, if you can't get the dream where you are standing right now, there is nothing wrong with that. Move. I tell you all the time, you're not a tree. You're not a tree. Get up. Move. Get your damn dream. All right. I have no patience for people that don't want to get their dream. I have no patience for it, dude. I don't get mad, but I just I just keep on moving. I don't I don't want to deal with people that don't want dreams or don't want their dreams, you know? Yeah, see, and life happens. But here's the thing. Even though life happened to you, Joan, you're still finding a way to make things happen. You're still taking steps to do the things that you know intrinsically that you want to get done. That's why I say on this channel, it's not just about credit, right? It's not just about credit. If anybody's on this channel, and I know for sure, obviously, Joan, you're um, one of those people, but if anybody's here that has talked to me personally, you already know when I get on the phone with you on that consultation, like I'm talking to you like you're my friend because I understand where you want to go. That's why I ask you the questions, because I want to know where you want to go. Your credit report tells me so much about you, because get this. And Joan, you can you can appreciate this. When I look at a credit report, 
I see your life story. Yeah. Whether y'all believe it or not, your, your credit report is your life story. Every time I see a credit report with some negative marks, do you know I hear a life story? When I say, what happened with that medical collection? <laughs> People literally will start telling me, oh man, you know, I got a divorce and, you know, I was at work and I was stressed out and I fell down the stairs and then I had to go get a cast and yada, yada, yada. And then I just stopped paying the bill and blah, blah, blah. I just learned so much about you. I just learned a ton about you. And all I did was ask you about a damn collection right? You have child support on your credit report. I ask you, what's up? What's going on with this? I just want to know when you stop paying. You start telling me all about your baby's mama. You start telling me about how she be driving up, throwing bricks at your house. You start telling me all kind of stuff. <laughs> so your credit report tells a story and we're going to, I'm going to segue into that actually. <laughs> But that's why on this channel, I'm not always talking credit. So if you want me to just jump right into credit, 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 you in the wrong spot. You in the wrong spot because credit is life. And I just told y'all we in the matrix. Um, all right. So we talked about being denied uh, after the mortgage is approved. Um, and honestly, let me just say this and I'll move on from that. But having your loan denied after the initial pre-approval is actually worse than being denied up front. <laughs> because it literally shows that you were you were on your P's and Q's up until that moment that you got approved. That means you can't be trusted. You can't be trusted. So now the underwriter's looking at you really super sideways. Like they're looking at you at a 180 angle, majorly sideways. <laughs> because wow, you were actually only able to act like to keep it up and keep up appearances until you got that approval. So we know we know you're crazy. We know you ain't gonna make this mortgage payment. We know you're not because you done already messed up. What the hell? <laughs> Credit is run twice during the Tell them, extreme. Tell them. These are things that your novice homeowner is not gonna know, right? And I only know it because I'm in the credit space. I only know it because I, I'm, I'm here in the matrix with y'all. Right. But I'm looking at it from a different angle and I'm looking at it from a less emotional standpoint. That's why I can see it clearer, more clearly. It doesn't mean I'm better. It just means that I can see it more clearly because I'm looking at it from a business standpoint. You're looking at it from, oh, my God, this is my dream. I'm going to get this house. Oh, yes. The bank knows you're going to do that. The bank knows you're going to go off and start, you know, financing furniture. The bank knows. They know that you're already going to probably try to apply for a car once you get this home approval. They know that you're going to be looking at drapes and blinds and you're going to be looking at how to repaint the house and you want to repave the driveway and change the landscaping. They know you're going to go and charge up all this stuff before the house even closes. They know you're going to do it. They know it. OK, so what we have to do as consumers now is we have to find crafty ways to fight back. Right. Wait until you move into the house, then act a fool. That's what you do. All right. Just closed on my home in Miami this past December and it happened to me. There you go. And this is a military man talking. If they're even doing that to people. And I'm, I'm only giving his business out because he said that he was a military person in my last live. Thank you for attending. <laughs> but, um, oh, and you know, I'm sorry. I don't want you guys thinking I spit on my face. I have a, um, a zit patch on my face. It's called, a what do you guys call it? I know the girls know, cause we don't like to get pimples on our face. Um, pimple patch. That's what it's called. Your girl got a pimple today. Um, and I touch my face a lot, as you guys can see. So I had to put something on it. Um, so that's what that is. That's my pimple patch. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so here's Extreme, <clears throat> a person that is in the military, armed forces, and the government had, or the government, not the government, but the underwriter, the underwriter uh, had enough nerve uh, to run Extreme's credit twice. Extreme, if he's in the military, he has regular income. The bank knows that his income ain't going to stop, right? He's a person that is getting regular income, yet they found the need, they felt the need, 
because they didn't trust him enough. They ran his credit again. That's messed up. That's messed up. So if they're treating people in the armed forces like this, what do you think they're going to do to a regular consumer, right? If you just barely got approved for that loan for, and this, I'm not talking about extreme. I'm talking about an average person, average consumer. If you came to me and we got you to 670 and you ran out and got that up, got started applying for houses, how do you think they're going to treat you? You're like at the bare minimum credit score <laughs> that you should have to even be applying for a house. They're going to run you through the ringer, through the absolute ringer. OK, and see that I lost people because now I'm talking too real. <laughs> Only credit day matters to me. is Exactly. I don't even have it, there you go. Everything is on auto pay. And I try to tell people auto pay is, an, is magnificent. It's magnificent because if you know for sure that you are not going to pay or you're not going to pay attention and you're not going to pay your bill on time, that you need to have auto pay. Auto pay is fantastic because auto pay is always going to ensure. Hold on. God, I got to clean my little, got to clean my glasses real fast. Um, but auto pay I don't want to make too much noise. Uh, auto pay will always ensure that you have at least your minimum balance paid or you have the amount that you have set because you can set the auto pay to be any amount that you want. Right. As long as it's the minimum uh, due. Right. Y'all know these aren't my these aren't prescription. These are my blue blocking glasses, blue light blocking. OK. Yeah. And it's so funny, Extreme. Also, <clears throat> let's talk about being in the matrix <laughs> and learning how to play. Uh, paying by the due date. Fantastic. However, if you can pay before the statement close date and keep your auto pay as well, I implore you to do so. I implore you to do so because you are going to then obviously get your debt down. This is for people that have debt that they can't pay all at once. Um, kind of like what Joan Kay was saying, where she pays most of her bill before um, the due date at the statement close date. If you're not able to do that, just make payments in between. You know what I mean? So you can start working on that debt. All right. VS yes, Extreme again, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Club Fortune. I mean, what did you learn? Tell me what you learned. Put a jewel next to it and tell me what you learned if you're still here. I would love to know because um, I, I want to know like what people want to learn and anything that I don't learn, I'm going to learn it and bring it to y'all. I am because I'm, I'm loving this going live thing. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> so you're paying the card twice a month. Uh, that may be directed at you, Joan. I'm not sure if um, Nick, you grab uh, grad, maybe talking to you. Um, so yeah, uh, Joan, maybe let her know, but I, I would, but here's the thing. She doesn't have to, she technically is, she probably is paying it uh, twice a month. Um, I'll let her answer, but she probably is paying it twice a month. Because by the time your statement close date comes, uh, if you pay it before, your your statement has not closed yet. So once it closes, that's when the bank or the creditor determines what your minimum balance is going to be to pay. So, yeah, she's probably paying it twice. Exactly. So and, and, and here's the thing. You guys have to look when we when you go on to any platform. I don't care if it's YouTube, if it's Reddit, if it's Kiora, Facebook, get into some Facebook groups too, you guys. Um, and I guess, you know, I've been talking about my Facebook group and some of my, some of my videos, but I never actually set it up. I'm going to set it up because I want y'all to migrate over there too. Cause I want to have open conversations about credit and about the things that I know. Cause certain things I can say it a certain way on Facebook or yeah, I can say it a way on Facebook that I can't say it on YouTube. Because remember, over here, I'm monetized. So I cannot say certain things. OK. Um, and then I can kind of let you guys in on like some of the methods that I use for credit repair. So I could do that in the Facebook group. And I can't really do that on Facebook um, just because when you give that kind of information to a, a wide audience, it's not appreciated. And it's not that one on one where I could really break it down is not here. I don't get that in Facebook unless or I'm sorry, in a YouTube um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work that out though. Cause we have a channel membership too, but I haven't been able to figure out what I want to put in there yet. Cause I want to have like private conversations with, with subscribers that really want to get this game. 
because I, I am all about helping y'all get to where you need to go. I'm all about it. All right. So yeah. Um, but back to what you said, extreme, it can be either a few days before, or I'm sorry, the, um, a few days, it is a few days after, but what I was going to say, the snapshot that the creditor takes can happen a couple of days after your statement close date. So that's where that's another little nuance, right? You don't want to just rely on the statement close date to make your payment. Okay. You want to do it a couple of days before, because that way you're not going to miss it at all. And then if you start to run it up, you start to run your balance up, you know, do it a few days after the statement close date, right? Do it a few days after. Don't do it. Don't, if your statement close date is the 18th, don't pay your bill off and then run it up on the 19th. Don't do that because the, the, the creditor could take a snapshot the day after. And let's go back to these banks ain't loyal. And if my Hebrew Israelite is still in the house, let me know. Drop a jewel in the chat. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? Hang on, Joan. I want to do this for you. Um, hold on. Oh, you know what? I can't do it from here. Darn it. Hold on one second, Joan. I want to... All right, let me ask you, because uh, I, I know eventually I'm going to need some moderators, and I don't think any of my mods are actually here, unless, Extreme, are you a mod? I don't know if you are a moderator. Let me put this on mute. All right, I'm just waiting for the chat to pop up, because I'm looking at you guys through StreamYard, not through YouTube, so I got to pull up YouTube. Um, extreme. I'm pretty sure you're down. I'll make you a mod. And then Joan's pretty loyal. Joan, Joan's not like these banks. You know what I'm saying? Joan's loyal. She's not like these banks. <laughs> so I'm gonna make her a mod too. You know what I'm saying? Oh, snap. All right. So I'm handing out wrenches. Um, all right. Okay. So you should probably, Extreme and Joan, you should probably see uh, a wrench by your name now. I think, I think. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to get back on task. Just give me a second. All right. I see Extreme has one. I don't see if Joan has a wrench yet. Hold on. All right, it says you are, but I, oh, there it is. Okay. All right. It just means, Joan, it just means if somebody starts talking crazy, you could tell, you could kick them out the chat. That's all. And it tells people you guys are special. <laughs> That's really all it is. Um, okay. Let me get back on task, y'all. <clears throat> John. Okay, John, why'd you drop your name? We see, we know you're John. We know you're John. <laughs> we see your name. Okay. <clears throat> and Club Fortune, you've been dropping, uh, you've been dropping jewels, so. You're a mod too. As long as y'all act right, I'll make y'all moderators. Shoot. All right, let's keep going. Yes, auto pay is just a safety net for not having a late payment. Exactly. And then um, just a real quick tip about late uh, late payments. A lot of people start panicking, like if, they're, if their uh, bill is paid a day late. Sorry, guys, I have this jewelry on. It's like hitting the desk. Um, okay, so whenever you have a late payment too, let's, let's be clear about that. Whenever you have a late payment, if you are a day late, most banks will not even charge you. OK, and they don't report that your late payments do not get reported to the credit reporting agencies until they are 30 days or more late. OK, that is why it's so important to look at your credit report. Right. Because if you have something reporting 30 days, 30 days, 30 days, 30 days, that's a problem. How are you 30 days late four months in a row? Probably not that possible. It's probably not possible. But 
when it's 30 days late, that's when the bureau or that's when the creditor reports it to the credit reporting agencies, aka bureaus. So if you're a day late, you will not have a late payment show up on your credit report. Right. And then you guys know when it comes to student loans, they will not tell any credit reporting agency that you're late until you're like 90 days or 120 days late. So y'all be having time to catch up on these late payments. This is why creditors hold late payments over your head so highly, because it takes so much time for you to not pay it for it to show up. So they really have questions. They're like, damn, we already know it's not going to report for 30 days. What were you doing those whole 30 days that you couldn't pay that bill? And now it's reporting. That happens with child support, too. We're going to talk about it. I ain't, I ain't there yet, but we're going to talk about it. All right. Now, uh, let's see. And we all know you guys are fairly real, well rounded because you're here. All right. So, segueing into the next topic, social credit scores. I know y'all are aware that this is happening. So many people are up in arms about these social credit scores. Y'all got to realize your credit report is already a social credit scoring system, it's not just credit. Credit is a part of who you are socially. So it is part of your social credit score. Think about every part of your life that is scored, right? Or every part of our lives that deals with points. And, um, you know, uh, if there's a curriculum involved, all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> the very first time that you all, myself included, had, we were, we were, introduced to the social credit score in preschool, in kindergarten. You know, when they used to have those boards up and they would put a gold star whenever you did something good, you were already part of the social credit scoring system, right? Society has put you in it way earlier than you even thought. We've been in it forever. So we're looking at China, like China is this crazy place for this social credit scoring that they're doing when America has been doing it all along. If you're in a certain zip code, creditors and bankers will treat you differently, right? A lot of people like to say it's a race thing. I'm sure there's some, there's some aspects there, but it's based on your zip code, which is why when I was in California, um, my business address started off in Hollywood. It was where, you know, my, obviously my apartment, but then I moved it to a zip code in Beverly Hills. I did that so I could get better credit offers for my business. The, the, the creditors don't know if I'm black, okay? The, the, the demographics in Hollywood is not predominantly black people. So I can't, I can't agree with the race thing there, okay? It was my zip code. It wasn't my race in that case. So I moved it over to Beverly Hills because it doesn't matter what race you are in Beverly Hills. If you have that, you have that zip code, you're going to get good credit offers. And as soon as I moved it, American Express came a knocking. So it works. Social credit system. All right. There's so many things that go into the social credit system. We're already in it. Your credit report is one of the biggest things that will tell us who you are. Your report card in school tells everybody who you are. If you're a driver and you have a lot of driving points, right? A lot of points on your driving record, then we know something's up. Okay. Social credit scoring system. An insurance company can charge you more because you have points on your driving record. Social credit system. They assume you're not responsible. Social credit system. Right? Your insurance company, health insurance, life insurance, they can charge you a higher premium if you're a smoker, if you already have pre-existing conditions, because they're banking on the fact that you're going to continue to be unhealthy. If you're a smoker, they assume you are not going to change your lifestyle. They can charge you more. Social credit system. Is any of this making sense? Right? Right. When you're in school, your grades, if they're high, they'll put you in advanced placement, AP classes, right, which helps you with credits for college. And when the college counselor sees that, they know that they need to place you higher. If you're placed higher, you know, you're going to start off at a, at, a, at a better place than a lot of college freshmen. 
which is going to help you out socially for the rest of your life. Social credit system. All right. It's already been here. Am I wrong? If I'm wrong, let me know if I'm wrong. But ever since you saw that first gold star in kindergarten, you were in the social credit system. Tell me I'm lying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So she did answer. So I paid the balance by, there you go. Okay. So yeah, she's giving game y'all. She's giving game. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So Joan K um, likes to have a small balance to reflect on her credit report. Like the last, she says her last month's balance shows $17 and uh, she has a 7,100 credit limit. That's perfect. All right. See, Extreme is giving you knowledge right here. If anyone is in the market for a home, do not, do not open any type of accounts at all. Avoid using credit cards to add to your debt. Exactly. Because if the, if the home is the goal, why are you doing other stuff? If a home is your goal and you have it within reach, don't jeopardize it, you guys. Because remember, the time is going to pass regardless. So just sit on your hands. But don't do nothing funny with your hands when you sit on them. Just sit on them and be still, damn it. Yep, statement closed date. That's a gym. And that's the new thing we're doing on this channel, y'all. Every time you hear a gym, drop a diamond in the chat. That's what we're doing. We got to find a, a symbol for the matrix, though. What should the matrix be? Should it be an alien? Should it be an alien space <laughs> when we start talking about being in the matrix? I think that would be great. That would be cool. All right. Also. Also, my multiple payments throughout the cycle to make sure I keep my balance manageable. But that's just me. Yeah. And even with what Joan's talking about, you got to have a you, you got to have a budget. You got to have a plan. You guys will start to see um, just like uh, the Dave Ramsey debt snowball. There's uh, the, the snowball itself is just a principle. Right. It's just a starting point. You can uh, alter the snowball method to work for you. So your snowball method may be I make a you know, I pay the smallest credit card but I pay that smallest credit card two, three times a month, four times a month. You gotta, you have to take these methods that these gurus give you and then put your own little spice on it. Put your own little pinch of salt on it. That's what you do because that's how you're going to win. They give you the foundation to start with and then you, you build on it, right? Nobody says you can't pay your credit card bill twice a month. Do it because the bank doesn't expect you to do that. And when you do it, you get rewarded, right? Hell yeah, I'm gonna do it. And we're gonna be talking up in that mug. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yes, yes, it can. So uh, back to the banks ain't loyal. I have a credit union that I've been with for 20 plus years. This credit union, after I started learning about secured credit, when I tore my credit up back in the day, um, when I opened my first secured credit card, I called them up because I had heard something on YouTube years ago. And I said, hey, I, this is when I learned about the statement close date. <laughs> and try this with your bank because I want you guys to understand how these banks ain't loyal. Y'all don't believe me. These banks ain't loyal. So at the time I called this bank, this is um, something that I asked them. After I learned about the statement close date trick, I said, I called them up and I said, hey, I need to know what day you guys report to the credit bureaus. Is it true that the statement close date is the day y'all report? Do you know this representative sat on the phone and would not say yes or no? They told me they didn't know. These banks ain't loyal. She sat there and lied to me. She knew damn well that she knows when my, my account gets reported. She knew. But she sat there and she lied to me. I'm a client of almost 20 years at that point. She lied to me. I had to go get my information from YouTube. These banks ain't loyal. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Stop thinking they got your best interest in mind. They don't. They don't. They want the money. Um, I already explained the, the mod thing, so I know you already got that. So yeah, if, if somebody's talking slick, you literally can just right click or left click or whatever and kick them out. Or you could put them in timeout too. Because some people don't be knowing. They don't be knowing they're rude, but, you know, they be coming across rude. <laughs> so should you just stop using the card the week of the statement end date? No, 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 no. The thing is, uh, Nick, you grab, you, you don't have to stop. 
You don't have to stop. The thing is that um, you have to pay it. Well, yeah, I guess you do have to stop. So you want to pay it, right? And then pay it to an amount where you're going to only be using 10% of your utilization. Do that. And then give yourself a few days, a grace period after the statement close date, and then start using it again, right? So yeah, that's what you want to do. So you have to, you have to, um, you have to reduce your spending a certain time of the month. That's all. That's all this is. It's just adjusting your behavior for a certain time of the month. The creditors didn't bank on you. They didn't expect you to know that information. They didn't expect you to know it. And now is the time that you have to know it because with the credit crunch that is happening, regardless of what they say, the credit crunch is happening. With this credit crunch that's happening, you got to start maneuvering and looking you know, more economically viable to the banks. You have to. And these are the little tricks that the average Joe can use, right? Because it makes it look like you are making more income when you do that. Because if you're able to keep your balance low or pay it off before the statement close date, um, the bank, or not the bank, but the creditor, the creditor doesn't know what your income actually is because you state your income. Remember that you state your income. So they don't actually know what your income is, but they can assume that it's not high enough if your utilization is too high. I hope this is making sense because I know I'm a little bit back and forth, but you got to make it look like you have more money. Okay. Because that's when they're going to start to offer you more. Okay. Joan, we are her <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what uh that's what a moderator is. <laughs> hey, I need some Hebrew Israelites up in here uh to be some mods too. <laughs> oh my god, I promise I'm not clowning if anybody is one. I am not clowning. But them brothers be tough, dude. Like even though they kind of dress like ninja turtles, um <laughs> and I keep saying that, but I want people to see. Hold on. I'm going to share my screen real fast. <laughs> and we're going to get back on topic, y'all. <laughs> if you guys know what Hebrew Israelites are, can you just put a one in the chat before I put one up on the screen? Or put a jewel, because I'm about to drop some jewels. I promise. If I ever like get super famous like Oprah... I want a Hebrew Israelite on my team. I am not playing with y'all. All right, hold on. Sorry right, for the noise, y'all. They must have heard me talking about them. That's why they're showing all the serious pictures. Hold on. Let me see. Serious lights, Hollywood. Maybe the ones in Hollywood weren't real. Is that what it was? The ones in Hollywood weren't like real ones? Because that's what we used to say. We used to say they look like Ninja Turtles because they would wear purple and gold and green and like all these crazy colors. And that's kind of why people didn't take them seriously because of the way that they would dress. And it's like, I hated that people didn't listen to them because of how they looked. Oh, snap. They got some out in Richmond, Virginia. I'm about to show y'all real fast. Then we're going to get back on to credit. Don't trip. Hold on. Bruh, this dude got a pickaxe. Oh, my Lord. So this is typically, this is like what a typical one kind of looks like when they're out there. Yeah, YouTube ain't gonna let me monetize this damn video. But this is what they look like. And they be spitting facts. That's the crazy part. Like they spit a lot of facts um, about just life in general. And if you if you say something to them, they can literally quote a Bible verse like that. And usually what it is, is it's like one main guy will stand there with the microphone and he'll tell you about yourself and he'll tell you about society and he'll tell you about the white man. And then he'll say, so-and-so, read such, 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 Bible verse. And they will literally flip to that page and that brother will start reciting that crap. So these guys know their stuff. So I'm not saying it's a clown, not at all. It's just, 
it, it's just something, something is off. And that's why people don't take it seriously. It's like, it's like, bruh, like if you were followed, like if you were my body, <laughs> I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna be done. But if you were, my, <laughs> if you were my bodyguard and you were walking around with a pickaxe, like we're all getting arrested. We're all getting arrested, bro. We're all getting arrested. You got to wear a tuxedo or a suit. Like you got to, <laughs> you got to wear a suit. When I started doing public speaking, brothers, you need to wear a suit. Can we just agree to that? Can we just agree you, you're not going to be looking like this when you are my bodyguard? Can we just agree to that? Okay, I'm done. Back to credit. <laughs> Robbie clowning. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Let me get them off the screen. I'm going to pray for forgiveness tonight. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. All right. Okay, call your credit card company. Ask for a closing date or... <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <sighs> All right. So I make sure to pay my balance down two to three days before. <laughs> I'm not laughing at her comment. I'm sorry, guys. You know how you say something sometimes and you crack yourself up? And what you say probably isn't even that funny, but like <laughs> you just crack yourself up. That's that's what's happening to me right now. I'm sorry. Okay. So I make sure to pay my balance down two to three days before my closing date to allow the payment to post. Exactly. Like I said, Joan is on it. Like she knows. That's why she has a wrench now because she totally knows. All right. She knows. She knows what's up. The system is, has been, and always will be exactly. Yes. See, see extreme, you know, that's what I'm talking about. And, um, so now the zip code that my business has, um, it is in, as I'm looking around, I haven't checked the income for this area. Um, cause I really just love the price. Like I, I pay very little for this office space, but I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I'm in Virginia. Um, cause really it was the price of this place that caught my eye. Um, but as I drive around, it's like, oh snap, there's like nice ass houses here, like totally nice houses. So I thought to myself, okay, this must be a, a pretty good um, part of town. So I don't think I'm going to mind having a zip code, like being in this zip code. Like, let me show you one of the houses. I'm going to show you what the neighborhood looks like really quick. Okay. And once the address becomes public knowledge where you can, you can pull it up, then I'll let you guys know like where it is. And it, it probably is going to show up on the screen anyway, but let me show you what this, how, like, this is literally what the houses look like around the corner from where my, where my business is. They literally look fake. Like the houses in this neighborhood look fake. <laughs> Y'all. The lawns actually really look like that over here. Bruh, if I could get a house out here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I think that this is, a, this is an okay zip code. I really do. I think it's an okay one. So, let me go back. I want to see if I can find another house. Um, but this is Virginia. You guys, Virginia is beautiful. Virginia is a beautiful place. And, um, you know, um, I'm happy that I made, that I made the move. Um, cause yeah, the, it's weird. Like I drove, I drove by these homes the other day and I seriously thought I was in like the Truman show or something. I'm like, these houses cannot be real. This can't be real. Why are they, why are they so clean and perfect? So I know there's an HOA. I know there's an HOA there, but it's beautiful. That's all I have to say. It's beautiful. Um, and this is central Virginia. So I'm not in, like, I'm not in DC or Roanoke or, um, well, Roanoke is central Virginia, but I'm not in Roanoke. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> in Ohio, they do know you're black by zip code because they are pushed by who is her name. Yeah. And that's what's going to be happening right now, Nick, you grab, grad. And that's why I said people need to understand certain things like that. But here's, here is why. Let me be real. And I get, oh, where's my chapstick? Cause now I gotta, 
Girl, now I gotta really uh bust it down. All right, I gotta bust it down now. Here is why I don't want you all to get hopped up on the race thing. Because I know I said that on my last live. And I lost some people because I told y'all to stop focusing on race. Here is why I'm telling you to not focus on race. I'm telling you to be aware that you are going to be treated differently because of your race. Be aware of it. But do not, under any circumstances, do not allow that to let you become emotional about it. Don't let that be the focus of your conversations. Don't let that be like a, like a, if you didn't get approved, don't be saying, oh, it's because I'm black. Don't do that because they expect you to do that. Don't do that. What you have to do is make sure that all of your, your whole situation is straight, right? Everything looks good on paper. That's how you fight. You got to fight like the others do. And when I say the others, y'all know what I mean. You have to fight like the others do. They fight on paper. They don't go in the streets yelling and doing all this stuff. They don't do that. They use the law to get the things that they want. So you have to find a way to do that, right? So like I said, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that's not a thing. And I think that's where people, why people get upset with me. When I say, don't be looking at color, don't look at it, but damn, don't let them know that you're looking at it, right? If it's the zip code, I'm going to tell you, that's going to change. Let's talk about Inglewood, California for a minute. When I was a kid in the 90s, Inglewood was crap. The only people in Inglewood that had money, and it's not even really Inglewood, but it was the people in Ladera Heights, the Black Beverly Hills. Look it up, right? Those were the only Black people in Inglewood that had money. And for the record, Inglewood used to be white. That was a white city. And so was the city that I grew up in. I grew up in Hawthorne, California. Hawthorne is now shifting back to white. Look up the Wiseburn district in Hawthorne. That is a white area. All right. And I'm not being condescending. I'm just getting spirited here. All right, Nick, you grad girlfriend, talk to me in the chat. I'm just getting spirited. But Inglewood is still black. But if you drive over there, they putting up high rises is Starbucks and all kinds of vegan restaurants all over the place. But there's also M&M Soul Food. There's also La Louisiane. Look it up, honey. La Louisiane is my jam. Go up in there and get a buttery nipple. That's a drink, y'all. I'm not a lesbian. But go and <laughs> get a drink. You know, listen to some jazz, right? And there's some old pimp players up in La Louisiane. You go in there, they literally will grab you when you walk to the bathroom. It happened to me a whole bunch of times. You know how they grab your little elbow and they just kind of squeeze it a little bit? Hey, girl. Hey, pretty thing. Hey, sweet thing. You know? So it's both right now. But if you're in Inglewood, you have a very high chance of getting approved for something. Now, it probably does depend on the street that you're on. But uh, Inglewood is gentrified now. Okay? The, the rents in Inglewood are astronomical. When I was a teenager, when I was 18, 19, you couldn't pay me to live in Inglewood, California. I used to have to catch the bus through Inglewood to get to my job. When I was 17, I had a job at Fox Hills Mall. If you anybody from Cali in the house, woo woo, Fox Hills Mall was the shit. I love that job. Sam, lighten up talking about it. That was the best. I loved it, right? But I had to, to catch the bus through Inglewood to get to my job every day. I wasn't from Inglewood. I was from the South Bay. The South Bay is not the hood, you know, but Inglewood is just different now. It's just different. Right. And the reason Inglewood is so different um, is, is because of gentrification, obviously, but it's also because uh, SpaceX is over there. So uh, SpaceX is right where Inglewood uh, starts <clears throat> and Hawthorne ends. But the reason that the, the Wiseburn district of Hawthorne was so affluent is because it was closer to El Segundo, closer to Manhattan Beach. Like it's closer to that, the beach part of the beach cities, right? South Bay. That's why it's called the South Bay. It's, it's the bay. It's the, the ocean. Um, so when you do talk about zip codes, I hear you. But at the same time, 
like I said, we don't want to focus on the color because that's what everyone expects from us. We have to stop operating by this manual and this code that was written by other people for us, right? They expect us to be emotional about our color. They expect it. And that's why a lot of times we get treated the way we do in certain areas. I know I'm going to lose some of y'all. I know I'm going to lose some of y'all. And this is why I will be setting a, a private group to the side. This is why we're going to have a private group so we can have real conversations. I even want to get on Zoom with y'all and see your faces so we could talk about this stuff. Because to grow, like, and I'm going to just, I'm, I hate this, but I'm going to talk to the Black people right now. I hate to do this because, you know, I'm supposed to be for everybody. But Black people, we got to learn to keep the damn Black dollar Black. Can we talk about that? for a minute <laughs> because we want to talk about gentrification, how, you know, creditors are judging us based on where we live and da, 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 da. But damn, we could actually be boosting the economic structures in our areas. We could be doing that. But a lot of times what we tend to do is we tend to want the handout. We tend to protest until we get what we want, where our counterparts I'm a LA girl. So our counterparts that are over by the Grove, our counterparts that are in Beverly Hills, that are in the Hollywood Hills, you know, the ones that are in these areas, they know how to do it, right? They go to their leaders directly. They don't be protesting. They don't be tearing up shit, right? I only say this because I literally was right, right down the street from an uh, area that they tore up. I'm going to get back on credit, but I'm going to just say this one thing and I'm going to be done. In 2020, when they were doing riots, <laughs> they rioted a part of town that was a couple of blocks away <clears throat> from my house or my apartment. I shouldn't say house, you know what I'm saying? But from my apartment. Has anybody here been on Melrose in Los Angeles, Melrose Avenue? Melrose was a couple of blocks away from where I lived in Hollywood because I lived in the media district. So the media district is basically oh, whenever, you know, you film a, a video or a movie, I lived in the district where they cut all that stuff together. They composited. They did stuff like that. So post-production, that's where I was. Now on Melrose, there's a whole bunch of stores and stuff like that. But on the Melrose side, that's a, how do we say it guys without getting like flagged? Uh, that's a, read my lips, J-E-W. It's that part of town, okay? Do you guys know that people of color, every color, it wasn't just black people, blacks, Latinos, I don't think I saw too many Asians out there, but everybody went down there I'll say it. They went to the Jewish part of town. Everybody went to the Jewish part of town and tore it up, tore it up, broke out windows, started fires, did all kind of crap. The next day, they were out there painting, sweeping up glass, boarding things up within a week to two weeks. All of those businesses were back to normal, back to normal. So I'm saying all that to say the fighting and the looting didn't help. YouTube is now not going to push this video because I just kicked some knowledge to y'all. It doesn't help because you know why? Those businesses are insured. It didn't do anything. It didn't do anything because see the businesses that they tore up, those people have money. Those people have their paperwork set. They got their ducks in a row. So they were able to fix it. So it don't matter. Come down there and loot. Do what you want to do. You're not changing anything. And I'm speaking on LA. I'm not speaking on any other part of the country. I'm only speaking on Los Angeles because I live there, lived there, past tense. <laughs> but it didn't do anything. I drove through that neighborhood. I told y'all on another video, but my brother, I called him and I was like, hey, bro, I'm driving through this area and y'all share this because I know y'all got some friends that's going to be mad at me talking. I'm ready. Invite them in. Shoot. Um, but yeah, it doesn't do anything. So as I saw this happening and I thought, what is this? That was when I started to realize we're in the matrix 
And some of us have been playing this game all the way wrong, all the way wrong. And it's not my job to be who the media is telling you that I'm supposed to be. It's not my job. So I'm I'm not going to give them what they want anymore. And I know, I know y'all got to be with me on this. You have to, because that's the only way things are going to change. Yeah, this is why I need another channel. This is why I need another channel, because I can't, I can't go in like I really want to. Um, because this is a credit channel. Yeah, but I refuse to be who the media says I'm supposed to be. Right. Because they, they expect me to be a certain a certain kind of person. They expected me to be out there throwing flames and and throwing, you know, knocking over cop cars. That's what they expected me to be. But no, I'm going to fight on paper. That's what I'm going to do, because that's what everybody else does. We're the only ones that go out there and do what we do. We got to stop that. I know y'all probably went in on me at the bottom with these comments. <laughs> But I'm just, I'm telling you, bro, like we got to do better, man. Like even if we are still like hood in, in our hearts, we can't be showing that y'all. Like we got to, we got to tamp that shit down. Stuff. I didn't mean to say the S word, but we got to tamp it down. And I, I'm thankful that I saw that situation up close because I would have never had the perspective that I do now. I would have never saw the game that was being played right in my face. Last thing, and I promise I'm back to credit. Do you know that they paid to bust people down to L.A. to tear up stuff? Did y'all know that? I have a friend that caught that on camera. I have a friend that actually caught some people telling him on camera that they were paid to come down and start fires. Los Angeles. If they did that in Los Angeles, do you know what games they was playing with us in these other cities? Y'all, them riots were staged. They were staged. They were staged. We have video footage. They were staged. Because they wanted to play with your emotions. See that, Nick, you grad? That comment just I, 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 it got me talking about everything. Got me, got me going down a rabbit hole, girl. <laughs> oh, so funny. Yes, girl, we are in the Matrix. Look, where is the... Where is the Alien emoji. I'm about to throw one up there because everything I just told you guys, these are things that the media is not going to share with you. They're not going to share these things with you. But I was on the ground out there. I was on the ground. You can't tell me I didn't see what I saw. You can't tell me I didn't see it. Right? You can't tell me that. So I know there's a different way to play this and we got to play it together, you guys. We have to put down differences and play it together. Right? Do you have a budgeting system that works? <laughs> yeah, girl, if you could find a budgeting system, you're going to be golden. And I mean, go into Excel. If you have Microsoft um, Excel, they have a really great spreadsheet in there that talks about um, that is based on your personal expenses. So yeah, go in there. It, it's, it's a it's a pretty good, um, pretty good setup. There's another YouTuber, I forget her name, but she sells a budget spreadsheet on Etsy and it's it's fantastic. If I figure out her name, I will post it because I, I definitely will push another YouTuber. Girl, not a skull. You got to put an alien up there. <laughs> Don't forget the classes in the school system. For example, I'm Jamaican in Jamaica. The classes, for example, seventh grade has three different. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I was going to tell you guys a little bit about my um, schooling as well. Y'all know I'd be talking. Damn, I'm not supposed to be on here this long. Why do y'all do this to me? I don't understand. <laughs> Bro, it's been so long. I forgot what the one in the chat was for. Was it because we going to go out and write it? What we doing, y'all? We going to write it? <laughs> we going to throw bricks together, y'all? <laughs> That's why we got to go to Facebook, y'all. We going to Facebook. We going to Facebook. <laughs> hey, but I, I be hating to break stuff down to people like this because i'm gonna tell you somebody broke all of this everything i'm saying to y'all somebody broke it down to me a few years ago and it was such a hard sell it was hard for me to understand and believe what this person was saying but i don't follow this person anymore but 
you know, and, and just in case, because I'm sure one of his followers is lurking in my chat just because that's how they are. Um, but this person was essentially a grew up in the South, you know, and was picking cotton. This person picked cotton. This is a black man that picked cotton. He wasn't a slave, but he picked cotton. Um, cause that, that was still going on. You guys, like our grandparents, if your grandparents are over the age of 70, you may have a grandparent or a family member that picked cotton. Um, so he used to pick cotton instead of go to school. And this person is like a millionaire now. And he told me, stop focusing on your color. He said, you know, use it to your advantage when you can. He said, but don't make it the, the forefront of everything. He said, because the, the system will find a way to keep you down if you do that. And they will. They will. <laughs> That's funny. How you accidentally end up at one girl? Because I know you saw all the Ninja Turtle colors. You didn't get there accidentally, girl. You knew that was a Hebrew Israelite uh, funeral. <laughs> girl. <laughs> you can see them a mile away. Girl, when I would walk up to Hollywood Boulevard, I could hear them fools just on that microphone. Da -da 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 -da, giving out them Bible verses. They were so funny. And for the new people coming in, that's not spit on my chin. That's a that's a pimple patch. All right. Your girl's breaking out. <laughs> okay, I just transitioned to using my credit card for everyday purchases instead of my debit card. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's good to use your debit or your credit card because if some fraud does go down, your credit card company is not going to hassle you like your uh, bank will. Your bank will actually treat you like you're the criminal first before they will go after the actual criminals. But your credit card company uh, has a little bit more strength because they know that they'll get paid. Uh, so it's better to use your credit cards, you guys, than, rather than your debit cards. Because if you have the cash, uh, again, go back in the chat where what we were talking about earlier. You use your credit card for your everyday purchases. You could even use it for your rent. I use my uh, one of my credit cards uh, for my rent. And then as money comes into my regular bank account, I just pay the rent um, I transfer the money from my bank account to my credit card because I want to get the points. Because if you pay a certain amount for rent, you need to be getting them points instead of just paying it with your debit card or your uh, bank account. Because <clears throat> if the money's there, you could pay it off. <laughs> of course, Joan. And I assume everybody over there is. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm here in the office. but uh, So my next door neighbor is an attorney. So to the right of me is an attorney. To the left of me is a guy that has, um, he's an insurance guy, but also, um, what else does he do? Financial planning, I think. So I'm, I'm in a financial um, part of town. It's like a financial district is where I am. That's where my office is. And the next door neighbor, that's the attorney. He actually conceal carries. And he did tell me that. So I'm like, okay, cool. Now that I know that, um, I may bring mine uh, to the office. However, oh, Never mind. Let me be quiet. Uh, but yeah, they packing over here. I'm safe. <laughs> okay. HOA. Yes. And you can always tell there's an HOA when you see a manicured lawn. Like, because people on the whole don't keep their places um, manicured at all. Hey, now. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. I don't have a budgeting system, but I do have Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have a friend that made a really beautiful one too. It was it was amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like everybody has their way of doing things. You just gotta kind of do things, um, do what works for you. You know, even some of the stuff I told you guys tonight may not work for you. The principle works. The principle is it is what it is. Like you can't change that paying your bill before your statement close date is going to raise your bill or raise your credit score. No matter how you slice it, that's 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 a fact, right? Um, but you apply things the way that you want to. So if your budgeting strategy is to write things down, then write them down. The point is you have to budget. If you want to put your budget sheet in Excel, do it that way. But you still have to budget. That's the point. So the the, the point is you have to budget. And clearly, I don't care about the blue light anymore that's going to make me go blind because I've been sitting here without my glasses. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have to educate them, but 
what happens is we get educated to be emotional. That's the problem. They want to educate us, but they want to educate us only about the things <clears throat> that will make us mad. And that's not right. I will never agree with that. We need to learn things that, you know, we can take and harness that energy in a positive light. The Passover family. Was that who I put on the screen? Like I told y'all, they I don't think they ninja turtles. It's just the best description I could give for them brothers, okay? But I would let them protect me all day. So, and that's the alien gang, y'all, because we are in the matrix. So anytime you come through, drop the alien. So I know that you are in the matrix with me and you understand what's going on. We are taking the red pill. You want to take the blue pill, take it, but just be aware that you're taking it. I warned of this, but people didn't connect the dots. Oh, you got to tell me what that was. What, they miseducation, miseducating us? Is that what it was? We have to educate ourselves. Yep, exactly. Exactly. I like the idea of earning points and paying rent with credit. Yeah, exactly. All forms of credit are all, yeah. You got to go with, um, you got to talk to your management company about that. Like the one that, like my, excuse me guys, um, where I live, uh, when I pay the rent, I pay it through QuickBooks. They send me a QuickBooks bill every month. So QuickBooks does not tell you, oh, you can't pay with a credit card. I put that credit card number in there every month. <laughs> but some companies, um, they'll just charge you the credit card processing fee. And sometimes the only one that they may not take is Discover. Or Amex. Sometimes they don't take Amex either. They be hating on Amex. My property management company charges an extra 2.5 if I use a credit card instead of my bank account. Yeah, so you pretty much have to eat the 2.5 interest on the rent and then just pay it off in full so you can skip the interest on the credit card. So the 2.5 is not bad. In, essentially, you're paying 2.5% uh, to use the credit card. So it's not bad. That's not bad at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, Club Fortune, you the kind of brother that needs to come on screen so we can have a dialogue about it. Because um, the truth of the matter is, if I didn't, here's what's funny. The fact that I lived in an area that is so, I don't want to say the L word because that's a bad word and people get mad and da 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 da. It's a very lib city. And the fact that I could live amongst all these people and still see clearly, because it was very, it was an emotional time, you guys, and it was scary living there. Can I tell you guys real quick what happened? Then we're going to get back to my notes because I did not write those notes to not go over them. <laughs> but um, I was sitting in my apartment one day and I was watching Channel 5 because where I lived, Channel 5 was actually like right down the street. I lived down the street from everything, y'all. CNN was right around the corner. Netflix Channel 5, which is KTLA, um, like I said, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and then the Paramount Studios where Dr. Phil and all those other shows did their stuff, I was in walking distance of all these places. Now, I don't say that as like, oh, look where I was. No, y'all, you had to walk over tents over there. Hollywood is fake. Um, but the fact that I was in this hotbed, I was able to see so many things. There were days where kids were jumping on roofs, right? Kids were doing graffiti. Kids were throwing rocks. Kids were tearing up the neighborhood. They're tearing up the neighborhood that I live in because they're mad about something that happened a thousand states over. So you're going to tear up our city and where we live? That's how I knew something was off. That's how I knew a lot of these people were getting paid to do this, right? Because the last time something crazy like that happened was in the, the riots with Rodney King. That was the last time something like that happened. That happened in LA, so I could understand that. But this thing happened somewhere else. They actually bust people in from Minnesota. I so wish that I could share that video with y'all. Because if I did, your perspective on things would change so much. It's, it's nothing like seeing the lie on camera. 
it's nothing like it, y'all. Because the news has a chance. They can manipulate everything. But I saw it, bro. I saw it on camera. I saw it. Blew my mind. People literally admitted on camera, I got paid to come down here. Anyway. So I saw like a Netflix. Nothing happened to the Netflix building. But CNN was boarded up. Um, you know, they had like spray painted all over it and stuff. And, um, it was just, you know, there were signs everywhere. Um, the national guard was, uh, out there too. So I couldn't even go to the bank, couldn't go get coffee, couldn't do anything. But like I said, uh, there was a big police presence and, you know, there were days where we couldn't even go outside because people were circling the block with weapons and just, it was ridiculous. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, what is this for? So now I have to go, <laughs> you know, now I have to go figure out how to protect myself because I'm sitting in my apartment all by myself. <laughs> and somebody tried to break into my apartment. I'm sitting there. Somebody starts twisting my doorknob and like doing the shoulder thing, the shoulder like push into my door. So y'all mean to tell me I was supposed to like, see, I lost a whole bunch of people because I'm talking too real right now, but I'm not going to support that cause. Somebody tried to break into my place. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything to y'all. I didn't do anything to anybody. So that shouldn't have happened. I'm sorry. Anyway, back to credit. <laughs> hey, you be knowing. <clears throat> I love how Joan is staying on topic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I, but I still pay my rent through the, um, through my credit, through my credit card. Okay. So see, this is why I want to do the Facebook group because you guys can actually talk like this in there and then um, give each other like tips and tricks that you use for your credit cards and how you pay your bills and what credit cards you like and which ones have the best points and yada, yada, yada. That's the stuff that I like. I want to see that. All right. So let's just try to be on for like maybe 15 more minutes. I got a lot of notes, but anyway. All right. So we say you can't run, but you can't hide. And I said, y'all, we're all smart. We talked about social credit scores. Uh, we talked about China. I was going to go into a Chinese story, but then I started talking about race and all this stupid. Sh Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> and I'm very like, I'm just, uh, I have a, I, okay. I'm always myself. That's, that's the difference between me and a lot of YouTubers and the hell that's the difference between me and your coworkers, me and probably your best friend. I'm going to always be myself. And that's why these conversations always bleed through because everything's intertwined. I want you guys to realize that everything is intertwined. Credit is a game. We've been lied to about credit as well, you know, and uh, what the brother was talking about earlier. Um, what's his name? Let me see if he's uh, let me see if I can put his name up here. He might have clicked off because I was I was going in on the on the Hebrews. <laughs> but this guy right here, you know, what I'm saying he understood what I was talking about. He felt that, you know, um, but yeah, credit is credit is a game and we're all in the Matrix. So. All right. So uh, we talked about social credit scores. Um, and like I said, realize it's already here. If you guys like the show Black Mirror and you want to understand what I'm really saying, watch the Black Mirror episode. Um, the episode is called, what is it called? I thought I wrote it down, but I don't, maybe I didn't. Oh, it's called Nosedive. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the chat <clears throat> and that's going to be your homework. By the next time we see each other. All right. So I want you guys to look at this episode of Black Mirror right here because you're going to see how your social credit score is about to, to really mean something. If you've already seen this episode that's on the screen right now, I want you guys to drop a diamond or you can actually drop an alien in the chat. Give me an alien if you have already seen the episode called Nosedive. Because what it's going to show you is how your credit report is actually going to start to uh, that world is already here, where if you have certain certain uh, scores, 
in certain areas of your life, you are going to be denied access to certain areas. There's a story about a girl in China and she was denied entry onto a commuter train. They denied her entry to university. Why did they do this? They denied her entry because her father was a convicted murderer. And then her dad died in a car crash. Now, because she's associated with her father, this Chinese girl got a social tag of being dishonest, right? So they call it the SCS in China. And Tencent and Alibaba are two companies that are spearheading this with the Chinese government. So I want you guys to pay attention. This episode of Black Mirror, um, it has Ron Howard's daughter. Um, I believe her name is Bryce Howard. She's in this episode and it, it, it's, an, it's more American. So you can uh, digest it a little bit better and see how our lives are about to be just like this girl that I just talked about in China. That was a true story. Nosedive is not but the Chinese story is. So this girl in China has had to basically dispute um, the idea that she has been labeled dishonest in Chinese in the Chinese social credit system. It took her four whole years to get her reputation squared away. Does that not sound the same as you guys fighting to get negative marks off your credit report? How you start, are you starting to see the similarities now? Um, Let's talk about, again, how the social credit score is here. We talked about the gold stars, how we're all indoctrinated into that when we, we are you know, preschoolers. We get gold stars. The teacher loves us. Our parents give us extra kisses because we did good in school, right? We represented the family well. This Chinese girl's dad did not represent the family well, and the whole family has to suffer now. So how is that here in uh, America? You get denied if your credit score sucks. Uh, you can get put on a no-fly list if you are associated with certain people. Um, you know, your uh, your records, right? Your vaccination records. Uh, if you don't get, uh, you know, a chicken pox shot, right? You can't go to school. Can't go to public school anyway. Um I remember when I was working at the Postal Service, I've had a, a gazillion interesting jobs, guys. But when I was like 19, I worked for the U.S. Postal Service. And I remember they told me that I had to get a tetanus shot. If I didn't get a tetanus shot, I wasn't going to be able to get that job. So I thought, wow, that's weird. But you know, whatever. What did I know? I was like fresh out of school. So I, I got the tetanus shot. Right. So I could get the job. Uh, but I but if I didn't, they would have assumed something was wrong with me. And they would have judged me socially and not hired me. Um, your likes on social media. A lot of times people will look at a video on YouTube. If it doesn't have enough likes or enough views, they will not look at it. If you see somebody that posts a picture and you see that it only has one like, you are actually probably less likely to like that picture because you see other people just passed it by. Right. So there's a lot of ways that the social credit system is already implemented into our lives, uh, both obviously and, you know, in these really um, subversive ways that it's already here. Right. So honestly, whatever China does, America follows, uh, just like whatever California does, the rest of the country follows. Um there's a stigma with felons. Think about it. Anybody you know that went to jail, uh, felons have a hard time getting a job. They have a hard time, you know, getting licenses because social credit, social credit. The scoring is already here. It's already here, right? They're not able to rent in certain places. You know, you guys know about Megan's Law. If you're on that registry, you know, you can't live in certain neighborhoods. So the social so, social credit score is here. All right. So we talked about IRS. That's part of it, too. Um, judgments, any judgments that you get, they're going to hit your credit report. All right. All that stuff's there. Um, all right. I'm going to close this out while we talk about Father's Day. All right. I'm really about to get everybody up in arms here. <laughs> but I'm going to break this down real quick. So to my fathers out there, um, I'll talk about child support just because I know predominantly it's men that are on child support, right? So I want you to understand like your social credit score means so much in this world. And I don't want you to take that for granted. And I know that child support sucks, okay? But if you want to feel any better about your situation, 
I would say, you know, don't necessarily follow these guys that are talking negatively and they're so angry, right? Because I deal with, uh, with, quite a few guys that are dealing with child support on their credit reports. And I had a video where I talked about not removing child support. And I wanted to be clear about, about that. I don't remove child support for men that refuse to pay because they just have a bad attitude about the whole thing. I think that that's weird. But the reason too, that we don't necessarily fight child support as hard as, as some other credit repair companies do is because we understand that credit that your uh, child support can follow you. It doesn't matter if I remove it because your employer can still see it. They can still see it. They don't find out about your child support or your back child support rather. We're talking about guys that don't pay. And um, they don't see, you know, they may not, somebody may not see it on your, on your credit report, <laughs> but your employer is still gonna see it because once the judgment is out there, we can scrub it from your credit report all day, but the IRS is going to talk to your employer directly. It's not us. Credit repair cannot help you with that. Um, so I want to just kind of, kind of drop that right now because I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in deeper on another live, but um, this is just specially for the fathers because I want to help you guys follow this guy named tech lead. Tech lead is pretty cool uh, on YouTube. He's funny little Asian guy. He's a funny guy. Um, but when it comes to the child support, you can lose clearances. We talked about that. You could lose jobs. Um, your job is going to judge you. That's another credit scoring system. Now, your HR and payroll people have to work harder as well if you have that, because then they have to figure out what amount they're going to garnish. They're going to you know, take as the garnishment from your wages. Um, and as much as we don't want to believe it, there is a stigma attached to that um, as far as having child support show up on your credit report. It typically shows up because you haven't paid and it, it shows up if you haven't paid for a while. So while we're talking about this, I want to make it like clear how serious this is and why I want y'all to take care of this. It's not because I think that you should pay the woman. It's because I think that you need to understand how deeply this is going to affect you going on in your life. There's a stigma attached to it. On the social front, on the surface, it looks like you may not be taking care of your responsibility. That's how a lot of people will see it. I don't totally, I don't necessarily see it that way, but they'll also see it like you're a liability because anybody that has a lot of bills, not just child support, it could be anything. But if you have a lot of debt and you're trying to get a job and it shows up on your credit report, you're a liability in the sense that you may not be able to be trusted. Like if you came to work for me, you're going to be looking at social security numbers. You're going to be looking at photo IDs. You're going to be looking at people's personal information. If I know that you have a lot of debt, I'm not sure that you're the right person because you could be still in these socials and going and running them across town and getting credit so you could pay off your bills. Right. So you have to look at it this way. So when we talk about stuff like that, like debt, child support, all that kind of stuff, it's not to come down on you guys. It's, it's to really help you and boost you like to, to help you see how bad this is really going to look. Um, here in Virginia, if you don't pay child support for two years or if it's over $10,000 in arrears, that's a felony. If you get pulled over, you're going to jail. I don't make the rules, right? I don't make the rules. It's not fair. Like this, this crap sucks. It's not fair. But since we know that this is the process and this is what's at stake, we know this is how the system works. We have to work with the system. Ducking our head in the sand and not paying is not the way to go. Fathers, this is fathers of all colors. This ain't just one or two I'm talking about. I'm talking about all the fathers that don't pay. You know, and here's the thing. If you don't want to pay, that's, okay. that's well, it's not okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not necessarily okay not to pay, but <clears throat> I think... We got to, we got to, don't just, well, okay. Let me just tell you what could happen. You could go to jail. Okay. Cause like I said, it's a felony here in, um, in Virginia, check your state law. So you know what's up, but you could get jail time. Um, and then if, and let's think about it from a hiring standpoint, if I know you have back child support and I'm trying to hire you, what if you get pulled over and then you go to jail? 
Now I lost an employee, right? Uh, your driver's license can be suspended, right? You can't get to work. You can't drive to the office. You can't drive here where I live with the beautiful manicured lawns. You can't drive here where they got the HOAs. And you can't drive where we're in the financial district. Like you can't drive here and make your money because your license got suspended. So this is why employers will actually diss you if you have back child support. It's not because they think you're just this nasty dude. It's because you are actually going to inconvenience the company. There's a big chance of that, right? Um, you could be held in contempt of court, which means, again, you're going to go to jail. Your passport can be revoked. So there's even this you know, school of thought on YouTube and just in, in life. YouTube is a reflection of life, too. Uh, there's people that will leave the country both men and women, because women owe child support too, y'all. Don't trip. So you leave the country, then your passport gets revoked. Now you're stuck wherever you are, right? They're going to find a way to, to, to stop your life. That's why I say it's better to just get educated, understand how the system works, and then combat it, right? And maybe everything I'm saying right now, I may, I may not have to do a dub, another child support video. Um, but your licenses can be revoked. What kind of licenses? Occupational. So that means if you were trying to go to school to better yourself, right? But you have a kid out there that you haven't paid for and, and baby's mama got mad and put a judgment out on you. Um, you you want to get a law degree or a law. You want to go take the, the bar. You want to take a, the exam, the bar exam. You're not going to be able to because your, your occupational licenses can be held up because you didn't pay child support. So you cannot even better your life, right? Recreational. Today's Father's Day. Do you know how many dudes were out there hunting and fishing and doing all kinds of stuff? You need a license to do that in most places. They will literally not let you get a recreational license to cast a line out and catch a trout. If you haven't paid child support, they won't let you fish. They won't let you hunt. They won't let you do anything like they won't even let you do man stuff that requires licenses because, you know, everything men like to do requires a license. Right. <laughs> if you're two way, you need a license or a permit. <laughs> you like to hunt fish. You need a permit or a license. They can hold you back because of that, because of child support. Commercial. Those of you that want to be truck drivers, because maybe you want to start paying your bills. Maybe you want to start getting caught up on that child support. You're not going to be able to be a truck driver. You're not going to be able to be out there on the road again. You're not going to be able to do that because they will literally stop that license. They can stop your commercial licensing. They can stop car registration. So now you're riding dirty. So do you see how like making one financial decision, maybe out of spite or anger or whatever, it can seriously harm you? So that's why I say when it comes to just taking child support off a of credit report is deeper than that is deeper than that. And I'm glad whoever's watching is still watching because I want you to hear this because people just think it's, I just don't want to pay or, you know, credit solutionist just doesn't want to remove it because she's angry. Y'all, I don't have kids. So no, that's not what this is. It's just that I'm not going to put a Band-Aid on a gushing wound. I'm not going to put a Band-Aid on it because it's going to get you in the back end and everything I just listed, that's some real stuff. That's some real stuff, fathers, you know? So I want y'all to, to get it together. And actually, I'm, I'm actually motivated now to look into it deeper, to find resources uh, for clients that I get that have these issues, because I don't want you guys to, to have your life stop because of this. And I also don't want you to think you're going to get some type of freedom by having it removed. That's not what happens. You know, we're just removing it from the surface, but they're going to catch you because they're going to get you financially. They're going to stop your mobility and they're going to get you in the public record. Social credit scoring. All right. So it's very important to get these things taken care of. All right. So I had to get serious about that. So now I hope you can understand um, why I'm saying that the social credit score is real and it's here. They're doing it. In these little tiny ways, they're sprinkling it through society, right? Because even tomorrow, however many people viewed this, I'm going to get judged on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? YouTube ain't going to push it. Um, 
If there's not enough likes, if there's not enough people viewing it, if there's not enough concurrent views, YouTube will judge my channel on that. Social credit scoring, right? If I don't use the right title on the video, social credit scoring, it goes lower and lower in the algorithm. It's all around us, you guys. So the credit side is what I choose to focus on. We're going to start the YouTube or the Facebook group. Um, and I'll drop it. Let me hold on, guys. Stay on whoever's on. I'm going to give you the link to the Facebook group because if people join, I'll obviously be motivated to put stuff in there. So let me see if I could drop the link. And somebody, if you stay on long enough, let me know if you actually see it. Let me find my group real fast. Um, Credit Pro Academy is what it's called. And I am going to see if I can get the link and put it in the chat. Hmm. Maybe I won't be able to. I'm not very tech savvy when it comes to this kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, let me see. Invite with a link. Anyone in the group allow people to invite? Bruh, they make this so damn complicated, bro. All right, hold on. I don't know if that helps, actually. That that doesn't help. I think I will have to put it in the description. All right, I'm going to drop it in the description, actually. All right. In the description. Oh, never mind. It's going to be in the description later. Um, but look for it here. That's the name of it. All right. And then when you get there, I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to share my screen with y'all real quick. So I know I talked y'all's ears off tonight. I mean, do you guys have any questions or anything? Because y'all just be letting me talk, 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 talk. Um, anyway, this is it right here. So if you see it, then um, you'll know that you're in the right place. So I think here, this is where we'll start. And then um, what I may actually do is sometimes I'll drop links in here and we can have like private a pri like private conversations and stuff. Um, or we can talk credit. We could talk uh, if, it, if it slides into some other topic. I mean, it's all good because um, people can like participate. You can climb in. You can like let it go. Do what you want to do. Um, it's whatever. It's whatever. Right. But we want to start so we can have these places where we can convene and talk about stuff that's real. And if you guys have. Um, you know, a topic that you want to talk about. If there's something exciting and credit that you that you found out about and you want to let me know, um, this is this is where we could we could get that done. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think if you just click on it or something, it'll it'll <laughs> it'll tell you to um join. Yeah, I don't be all up in Facebook like that, but y'all can y'all can give me some um motivation. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, the way that I know, and actually these have blue light, but I have my, you know, those glasses that I wear in the car, the ones that um, they're like reflective blue, like turquoise. If I sit here in my office and I put those shades on, I can see my computer screen that's on my left, but on my right, it's completely black. I cannot see. So whatever this one is emitting on this side, when I wear those shades, dude, those shades are blocking everything because the whole screen is just black. So I'm not sure what color it is that my sunglasses block off on this side, but on this one, I can see everything. But these, yeah, it does. I can see the difference. Like blues look more green when I wear these. So yeah, it does block. They do. So you should get some. I actually got these for free on accident. Um, I went to Kohl's 
and the girl gave me a case, a free glasses case. And then when I got home, um, these were inside with the tag on them. I didn't drive back. <laughs> I kept my glasses um, and it turns out they look really cute with this hairstyle. But if my hair was pulled back, I'd look really weird. Um, but anyway, I think we covered just about everything. So your credit report says a lot about you, whether you want it to or not, doesn't matter. We're in the social system, whether we want to be or not. And like I said, check out that Black Mirror episode, Nosedive, starring Bryce Howard you are going to be very shocked and amazed by what you see um, because that episode is definitely what is happening right now in society. So I'm going to show that on the screen and that's all the play that Netflix is going to get from me because I do not believe in what they do anymore. Um, but... <laughs> I'm going to show you all this now. I'm out. But this is it right here. Now, see, I'm starting to lose some of y'all, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up in a minute. But this is the episode. So it talks about all the citizens are socially stratified according to a numerical rank between 0 and 5.0. So every time they interact with somebody on the episode, what happens is uh, like, say I go get some coffee and at the coffee shop, if the person that serves me the coffee is super nice, I'll take my cell phone right in front of their face and I'll give them a score. And then they'll score me based on how polite I am to them. So that's what she's doing in the picture here. She's basically saying, oh, hey, I like you. I'm going to give you a high score. And what happens in the episode is like she literally her social score starts to fluctuate so she's not able to get an apartment. She's not able to get a car. She's not able to get all this other stuff because she's acting like a not nice person or she rubbed somebody the wrong way and they started to actually score her lower. So y'all see how that could happen? Y'all see how that could be real life? You know? So it's a great episode. Check it out. Black Mirror is a fantastic anthology that show. see that she's at the coffee shop right there. And she and Jack has a 3.7 score overall over out of 5.0. So you guys know that this is real life. This is what's happening to us right now. This is the Chinese model and it's happening right now. Right. So think about it when you're in an Uber or a Lyft. Don't you score the driver and the driver scores you too. Have you all noticed that when you're in the app? You, you actually have a passenger score. So if you mess up the car, the driver can give you a one. So the next person, next time you Uber, they will deny you the ride. They will deny you because you have a low score. Uber is doing that, right? What's from the army? What are you talking about, Extreme? She says, who else needs glasses? <laughs> <laughs> girl glasses today I have my contacts in that's why I have my blue blockers on mm -hmm. but yeah I'm gonna wrap up soon y'all I just wanted to show you this and then we say yeah it does okay um Anyway, that was it, y'all. So I want you to look at this. I want you to get informed. I want you to know that art imitates life. I only say it because I lived in Hollywood and I saw it every day. So um, let's not be angry about what we see. As we learn, we grow. And the best way to get started on our reinvention journey, which is what the whole point of this live was, the best way to get to where we want to get in quarter three with reinvention, write out some real goals, concrete, concrete goals, and figure out what it is that you want out of this life and make a plan to get it. PX Credit Solutions is definitely down to be part of your journey. I would be honored to help you with that, to be quite honest. Um, and like I said, to the fathers out there, I hope my child support rant did not get you down. Um, I know a lot of y'all are some good dudes out there. You just caught a bad, you, you caught a bad rap. I know that. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to actually do a whole nother live about it because I, I want to clear up some things from my last live where I talked about it. So, um, oh, <laughs> you're funny extreme. Mm. They probably don't. And then don't they make y'all wear them like really thick ones? Like if you have to get glasses, they, they make them. And then they're like, the frames are actually like these. They make them the thick, thick black frames, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I think. Anyway, what time is it over there, Extreme? Tell me what time it is, and then we close now. And it like, oh my God, y'all, it's too late. Oh my God, I need to go to bed. <laughs> I got to get out here and drive, and hopefully I don't hit no deer on the way home. I saw the biggest damn deer on the side. There was a deer on the sidewalk today. And it was on its side and rigor mortis has set in. Y'all, it was 90 something degrees today. That was nasty. That's what I see in Virginia now. Dead deer on the side of the road, stiff as a board. God, it was gross. <laughs> okay. So yeah, what I'll probably do, um, because it's really late over here, uh, Joan, I'll check it. I'll check it in the morning um, and then we'll get everything, everything squared away. So yeah, I'm gonna pack up because my printer is actually on its way. So I have to work on you from the home office tomorrow. 7.01 AM. That's about the time I'm going to have to get up in a couple of hours because um, it's actually after one, one o'clock. So I got to go guys. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we sure are. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm going to close up, but pray for my pimple. I did pimple patches today. So girls, guys too, if you ever get a zit, get some pimple patches from CVS, Hopefully, hoping to go to bed, wake up and be good as new in the morning. Um, but I'll probably see you guys later on this week. I have a video coming out in a few hours uh, for kids and credit. So check that out when you get the alert coming out at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, do not forget, join the Facebook group that is right here, Credit Pro Academy. Um, of course, we're going to be talking credit. If we talk about other stuff mixed up in there, do not be mad. OK, do not be mad. And you know, y'all drop aliens because we in the matrix. Drop jewels when you hear something good. All right. Um, yes, pimple. Um, all right. So I will see you guys on <laughs> the next video. All right. My alien tribe is in the house. And uh, yeah, I'm going to drop my little obligatory alien and I am out of here, y'all. We're going to drop, drop, drop because we in the matrix. All right. We in this together, you guys. All right. I'll see you guys later. Topics you want to hear, let me know. Drop them, email them, do whatever you do, all right? But I'll see you guys later on the next one. Credit Solutionist, out.